Okay, looks like we are we are on. Hello, everybody. My name is Bezad. I'm Lisa. And welcome to the Naked and Famous Denim weekly live stream right here on the internet, on YouTube. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you guys again. We're going to mm -hmm. give the uh, room a moment here to populate, and uh, we'll get right into it. I mean, we've got a got an action-packed adventure uh, in store for you guys, I'm sure. I don't yeah. know. We don't, we don't plan we, these things too much. No. Not at all. We had a pretty busy week. Mm -hmm. We it feels like a week ago. The last live stream, it's a long time ago. Yeah, we had. Um, we were Brandon came to Japan. Mm -hmm. We went to Okayama. We went to uh, we went to visit some factories. We saw some mills. We saw our Higo no Kami knives being made. I got to take part in making one very briefly. I'm not going to take too much credit for that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was an action-packed week. We took a lot of photos, a lot of videos. We're going to have to post those up on the Instagram. I know the Instagram was a little bit uh, lacking this week just because we were on the move so much. And sometimes... In the mountains, you don't yeah, get you don't, you don't, Yeah, you don't get internet. And yeah. then also when you're in the moment, it's just kind of hard to you know be posting. You got to gotta pay attention to what's going on. So. Yeah. And there's also a lot of secrets too. You yeah. Can't just, just, yeah. You know, They're like, uh, don't photo this. Yeah. Don't, don't shoot them. No problem. Cool. All right. So the room, the room's populating here. We're seeing a lot of familiar faces in the chat. And before we get started, you know, I always, I always forget, and I always leave it to the end. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, I don't know if there's anything else. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Um, let's uh, let's say hello to the chat. We got BD in the house. Johnny Crumhorn. Welcome, welcome, Mario Castanello. Uh, Muhammad Rakib, welcome, welcome, Gary Rainey Jr., hello, hello, The Raven, hey, David Macy, hello, guys, hello, hello, Asian Jesus in the house, nice. we've been, uh, we've had, we have Asian Jesus in the house, we've I had Jesus, Jesus in the house, yeah, we've had right. Jesus Christ, I wonder if they'll both enter the chat today, we will mm -hmm. find out, um, Amos Ian's DC is in the house, uh, Gary Rainey Jr., is there any update on the next MIJ release? Oh, I got some MIJ updates for you today, sir. Good sir, you will have some new information on MIJ. Mm -hmm. uh, Shane Delahunty, hello from Vancouver, Washington. Welcome. Mohammed is here from Malaysia. MY represent. Woo woo. Uh, Andrew, celebrating Japan, celebrating the Japan progression to the knockout stage of the World Cup. Uh, all yeah. of like so far is just unexpected. Yeah. Unexpected. That, that's all, all, all it is. I wasn't able to watch it so much. It's like the first Germany, uh, Germany game. Japan I game. was at home, but I wasn't really paying attention because like, oh, oh this is just not going to happen. Yeah. And then like towards the end, I just looked because I was looking like the scores in the first half and, and deciding if I was going to watch the second half. And like it was like one zero, Japan was losing, and I was like, okay, well, it's not worth it. Yeah. And then uh, towards the end of the second half, yeah. I was like, whoa, like what happened? Yeah. I missed all the good parts. Yeah. I missed all the good parts of Spain as well. So. Yeah, we we've watched probably seven minutes total of World Cup action. If that, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, you know, it's just when you're traveling, you yeah, really yeah. can't watch. We had no, we had no chance. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of exciting to see that Japan is. Uh, Progressing the way that they have, so it just prolongs the World Cup for me because yeah. when Japan goes out, like it's just it's know, over. I, I feel like a lot of <laughs> people feel that way. <laughs> that's done. When their country's yeah. out, it's over. Yeah. World Cup's done. I'll see you in four years. Um, Nicholas Viplu ordered my Wonder Looper T-shirt. Well, thank you, sir. That's right, everybody. Uh, Wonder Looper is launched on WonderLooper.com. Mm -hmm. Soon on Tati and Yoko, but on WonderLooper.com we have the T-shirt available now. Um, BD, hi from Ni uh, Niagara. I was about to say Nigeria. Uh, that, that would have been uh, uh, very different. Uh, BD, hi from Niagara region. Can you talk about uh, Peterborough, Peterborough Northern Origin Club t-shirts? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that in, uh, in a minute. Um, John Davis, what's up, guys? Pretty how happy Indigo release day. Uh, Indigo release day? Am I missing something? I mean, we're releasing the indigo. We're always releasing indigo. Maybe. That's true. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, John Davis, hello from uh, Missoula, Missoula, Montana. Revolver Missoula is now open. Congratulations, nice. Revolver, wow. new location, great supporter of ours for Naked and Famous 
denim, uh, you definitely want to check out Revolver. Mm-hmm. They've got they've got a great selection mm-hmm. and a bunch of stores. So you can you're gonna be able to shop locally, mm-hmm. not all across America, but in, in several parts. Yes. Several parts of America. Yes. Congrats. Uh, congratulations. Uh, Jordan, see hello from Colorado. We've got Aunt Andre Floridian in the house. Uh, all right. Uh, Red seventy five. Hello from Birmingham. I'm Candy Fox. Hello from Northern California. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on forever. Um, all right, John. Hello from Washington D.C. Just ordered a pair of the Elephant XS. Great choice. Enjoy them. It is that time of year. It's getting cold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good, uh, good, good heavyweight denim season. Um, all right, uh, uh, BD. Uh, talking about uh, the uh, Peterborough Northern Originals collab T-shirts. We did a collab. It's going to sound bad, but I actually didn't know too much about this collab until it showed up on Instagram. Um, But we did some pocket tees with a uh, a local company. Uh, I'm going to have to do an Instagram post on it. Um, But uh, yeah, we have a, I mean, we're not, I'm not the whole company. So Mm -hmm. other people do their own projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I don't get looped in on things. Yeah. Well, especially when it's like pocket tees, it's like, you know, if it's like a, Jeans thing, it's, yeah. it's a little different. Pocket tees, more casual, like yeah. You know, uh, so can well, happen very discreetly. <laughs> yeah. So watch over Instagram. I'll, I'll post some stuff. I know we we mixed some of their pattern, like their fabric patterns, with mm-hmm. our t shirt So it's it's a great mix of uh, our two worlds together. Um, you know the other the other collabs that I tend not to know about too much until they come out, the essence ones. Yeah. yeah. So we work with a retailer in Montreal. It's a an online store called Essence. They also have a physical store in Old Montreal. Um, but one of our other salespeople uh, handles that account and does all their projects with them. And uh, and they do a great like I actually really enjoy because they often take a woman's silhouette and make it in men's sizing. Mm-hmm. And that surprisingly always like works. Like, yeah. Oh, they do that really makes well sense. with it. It looks yeah. cool. And so, like, some we'll often get like very fashion forward um, outfits uh, from those collections. Um, but yeah, it's uh, some, some look, I don't know everything that's going on. Sometimes I know most things, sometimes I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but those, yeah. those like collabs are kind of interesting because they're just like, oh, I like this, do it in that. And it doesn't really involve do it in this fabric, do it in that fabric. And it doesn't really involve like anything. De- developing from scratch mm. but it just you know makes it special because they're the only ones who's making yeah. it yeah we do some kimono shirts for them that mm-hmm. are exclusive mm-hmm. and uh and yeah then sometimes they'll take like one fabric and then put it in, in into a silhouette that exists but uh you know uh it's yeah might, simple, might be a different combination of things yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. um in in invest ian's essence styling is Easily some of the best from an online retailer. Yeah, they're very, very fashion forward. They are, uh, you know, there's a lot of luxury products on there as well. You know, uh, uh, very uh, top, top designers, top designers. All the top, mm-hmm. all the top designers are there, including Make It Famous. <laughs> <laughs> so we're right there. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, Zuir Sharif writes, Hey, Bezad, how's your year three pairs? How are your guys' year three pairs going? Mine are going well. Um, I don't have them on right now. Me neither. Yeah. I, was, I was wearing my Indigo Invitational pair the whole trip. Yeah. But I came back yesterday and it's like, you know what? Give them a break. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll post. I know we have to do our update post um mm-hmm. before the seventh. So a reminder: anybody who's taking part of the Indigo Invitational Fade competition, that uh, you got to put your uh, get your submissions in. My last two submissions, I didn't post on my personal just because I didn't. I kind of took some lazy shots. You know, my problem is I probably said it before is that whenever we do the inv- Indigo Invitational photos, um, I'm always like I'm always just waiting for the perfect day of of sunlight to approach. And you, as you guys can tell right now, it's, it's quite gray and gloomy uh, out here in Japan. And the days are short. And I'm like, oh, it'll, tomorrow will be a good day. Tomorrow will be a good day. And then by the time the day doesn't come, I'm like, oh, I have to take a photo. And then it's just kind of an on-the-floor photo of the jeans. Not very exciting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I have, to, I have to take a better photo for the next one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
we took a good photo of you though in the in the in the mill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we'll we'll post that up soon. Uh, Reese says in between two oh, yeah, shuttle that's looms. Within, that's within uh, and go they go invitational photo yeah, yeah. submission time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so I have a, I have a good nice. photo of Risa. Yeah, we'll, we'll put her. My, the the problem is like my jeans don't fade, so it's mm-hmm. like it takes. I don't it might know, take just, a little it's a, longer. It's but. not a great photo of the jeans, but it's a good yeah, photo it's a of good, me. Yeah, it's a good photo of Risa. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not super detailed of the mm-hmm. jeans. Um, but yeah, we were touring some mills. Uh, we got to visit them while they were in action, weaving some of our fabrics. It was it was great to see. You know, one thing when we do these mill tours, it's always like there's always like a little thing that I forget about, and uh, one thing I forgot about was the robot vacuums that suck up all the cotton and they were i don't know what it why i just i just didn't remember them going um but this time they were in full force like there there was a lot maybe there was a lot more of them this time but so when when they're doing weaving or when they're doing cotton spinning or doing anything there's always these giant vacuums that are kind of attached to the ceiling just these tubes that are on tracks that go back and forth back and they suck up all the cotton that gets you know kind of thrown up into the air mm-hmm. number one is so that you don't breathe it in but number two is so that they can recycle it mm-hmm. um so whenever you there's a lot of there are a couple of different ways that you know recycled cotton could be categorized um but i always my favorite version of recycled cotton is when they when they reuse those cotton fluffs mm-hmm. because that's the softest that's the lightest that's the airiest mm-hmm. you know if you think mm-hmm. when you're when you're spinning cotton or you're weaving denim, you know, any of the cotton that flies away, it's got to be the airiest. It's got to be the lightest. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Uh, it really makes uh, uh, a beautiful fabric when they get to reuse that. And it's also why, you know, when you do these mill, mill tours, it, if you're us, um, it's amazing that you can go into like a room where they're like spinning cotton or, you know, some, they have to mix the cotton or anything like that. And the floors are immaculate. Like there's, there's like nothing. It's, it's so clean in those rooms. That's because they have like 30 vacuum cleaner, like these things going back and forth, maybe more. Um, but I, I, I always find that to be so impressive because how unbelievably clean these areas are. Some, some of the, like some of the like older, like shuttle loom areas, there might be a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, build up on the machines. Yeah. Uh, but it, anyway, there's, it, it's an interesting, uh, right interesting and, to see the difference you know for me it was like um like there was there was like you know the, the they um like put shuttle rooms in the, in like the same section but sometimes they put like the new machines mm-hmm. in the in the in the like another section of the same room and you just go from like you know we were just like watching shuttle room you know as much as yeah, like yeah. like we can take in and then you like you know wander off to that new machine area and it's like holy yeah. moly like yeah. it's just like it's so funny to see and uh, the like brand new and like those machines are developing mm-hmm. like you know the technologies are de- developing so it's it's getting more impressive ma- faster and you know more yeah. like than... it's super speed it's very quiet yeah, it's very quiet it's it's just like and it has all these yeah. things, all the computer screens. Yeah, like yeah. you're not you don't you're not like there is no physical buttons yeah, or yeah. anything like that. And it's just like seeing that like right next to each other yeah. is incredible. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll put up some footage soon. We were, you know, it was interesting because we're in the room where all the shuttle looms are, and I'm I'm you know we're all looking. We're just like oh, it's so mesmerizing to watch you know this stuff get made, and. By the time we walked out of that room, I couldn't hear anything. And I'm like, oh, I should have bought earplugs when I went in there because it is so loud. And you don't, it like, I, I guess you you build a tolerance to it for, because you as you walk in, you're like, oh, it's loud, it's loud, it's loud. And then you're in there, maybe I'm just not paying attention. I'm memorized, mesmerized by the denim. And I'm walking out, I'm like, all I hear is ringing. I'm just like, it's, uh, it's so loud in those rooms. Yeah. And the, um, and the sad part is, like, other parts of, like, you know, mills, like, we can, like, ask questions and, you know, like, talk yeah, to yeah. The, the people who run the yeah. factory and, you know, just, you know, learn new things every time we go. Like, seriously, yeah. like, it's just, like, those conversations are so important. But in general, yeah, you, can't we can't, you can't talk. 
to anybody. You're right in front of each other, and you're like, I what? can't like, hear I you. The only thing you can, like, you know, usually the guy who's with us will just point at the machine, mm, and you're like, like, look at it. <laughs> they're just like that, and you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully you remember to ask them the question later on, but uh, <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes you miss out on yeah. something, but... Uh, it's always a fun time doing the mill tour. We got to see knives being made. Oh, that was incredible. Yeah. I did not expect that much. Uh, hand. No. The, it, the it amount was... of hand made this is, is. Yes. It's all handmade. And there's million steps, yeah. too. It's not like, oh, we do this, we do that, we do this, and it, yeah. that's it. Like, it's just like a million of steps. Yeah. Like, when you look at our Higo no Kami knives and you see like the naked and famous denim embossed into the mach- into the metal and like you know all all that stuff that's in that's in the metal there isn't like some giant like you know automated machine that's like you know pushing those out that's a guy putting it in stamping it down one by one so when we make 500 knives that's a guy doing it 500 times yeah one by one on a and- on I don't think there was a machine newer than 50 years ago in there I think maybe there was a couple, but it's it's like, and and it's not like there are newer machines. Yeah, they just like oh, this still works. This yeah. is from like my grandfather's generation, and yeah. that was brand new then. And I was like, that's impressive. Yeah. So like we still use it, like, and all of the like little spots that you know just you know you, you steps is like you walk from one you know one machine to the other machine and to the other machine, yeah. and it's just like. You can kind of tell by how the like the seat cushion is like yeah. <laughs> faded, it's like how much time this takes, yeah. as opposed to how much time yeah. that takes. It's pretty interesting, and it's it's, I mean, it's kind of like homegrown. Like it's not a giant, uh, you know, huge operation. It's oh, uh, very it's much a uh, family uh, small business. Yeah, uh, incredible stuff. Um, yeah, we got to watch knife making from start to finish. Yeah. Um, pretty cool. I, so we got, I got some video. We got some photos. We'll, yeah. we'll do a story. We'll put that up soon. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I mean, I don't remember everything because there's so many steps, yeah. and I didn't expect that. I didn't expect yeah. him to show us every single step, like yeah. you know. And it's just like, oh my god, I should have been paying more yeah. attention. Yeah. We do have a little, uh, a little infographic paper yeah. he gave us. Yeah. What What happened to our knives? He made. We made. He made some knives as he was explaining mm-hmm. every step. Yeah. He was basically just making knives for us. Um, yeah. So because we were coming and and you know it's it's uh it is in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and so he was like, oh, like I you know I have like I want to walk you through this uh, this process uh, together. And then uh, at the end of that tour, he was like, here's here's yeah. a knife for you. Yeah. So he made us uh, our own. Uh, yeah, same. It's the same one, yeah. brass Higo no Kami. So hopefully you can see that nicely, um, with the the naked and famous denim, you know, stuff on there, and then uh, with the nice blade here. So this was all made for us right there, on the spot. So very very cool. We're gonna be working with them even more now. I mm-hmm. think we have a bunch of knives. Yeah. Uh, but, planned like- out. They're, they're like, they're such a small operation, but they're like, capa- like they're so they're popular now. So yeah, they are, yeah. their capacities. Um, uh, so it takes a while, but you know, yeah. we're, we're getting, we actually, uh, they just finished uh, the second batch of production for this year. So we are going to have them you know, available at Tatenyoko maybe next month. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's a new batch on the way very, very soon. Yeah. Um, and then we. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to fix the lighting here. The lighting is going to change as the light pours in from the outside. So just bear, bear, bear with us with that one. Um, but yeah, we have. Anyways, we got to look at a, a bunch of their different metals that they have mm-hmm. in, in terms of finishes. Um. And uh, so there's gonna be more, more, more coming soon. And they're always really, really well priced, um, which is what I like about it, especially for the amount of hand effort that goes into these. Um, but there is gonna be one that will probably—it's not gonna come anytime soon. But um, yeah, yeah, we, we saw a 
good one that we have. We must have this. We must. Never show us the best, you know, because <laughs> no. every time we go to, to anywhere, we're like, what's the best thing? That, yeah. Like, what's the, and they're like, oh, yeah, but it's really, really, really expensive. And we're like, I, I don't care. Show me your best. And then it's often like, okay, we want that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of, I, I don't know how many people shop like that. Or like, you know, when you approach your suppliers, like, what's the most expensive thing that you make? And they're, they're you know. I mean, it's, it's a, you know, like, it, like we've encountered some things that are most expensive that it's just not. Yeah, know, yeah. You know. Well, there are certain things that are well beyond. But like, th anyway, this is going to be, whatever we come up, what we come up with next is going to be a very expensive knife. But yeah, well, at some point, yeah. I don't know what's next. Yeah. Next step might be more. Yeah, um, we will have more affordable ones, but there yeah. will be some limited editions, like peak of the mountain type, you know, mm -hmm. knives uh, coming, and uh, it'll be very exciting. I mm -hmm. think I think it'll, I think a lot of people will be excited by that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, coming soon. Um, Nicholas uh, Viplu writes, "I love." I'd love to order a knife, but I wouldn't be able to EDC it here in Japan. That's right. You can't carry a knife around with you in Japan um, unless it's for a very, very sp specific task. Like if you're going camping, it has to be like in your bag. Like mm -hmm. you couldn't have it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. um, follow your local laws. I know some places in Europe, you know, having a pocket knife is not allowed. I think um, it is one of those things, like, obviously, like, if you so are breaking the law or, like, if you're doing something sketchy and you get caught, you don't, like, they have another reason to kind of, um, like, bother you in a way. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not, like, if you actually, like, carry a knife and just walking about without doing, you know, any suspicious things then you know i mean nobody cares really yeah. the, i think the laws are created such that if they want to give you a problem they'll give you a problem mm -hmm. uh but i or, wouldn't or if you're doing something like aggressive or like you know crazy and then you like you have a knife that itself is you know being crazy might not be illegal mm -hmm. but you know th yeah, yeah. that can be it's, it's a it's a very even scissors are technically like in part of the like blade carrying rules of japan it, yeah. it's so vague that yeah. but it's, it's like designed it, on purpose but you like know that. obviously if you have a good reason like you just bought it or like you know if you're like transporting it to a place that you need to transport to like that's those things are, are fine it's not like you're breaking the law like th it's a very vague law that i don't you know, it's a, it's like one of those things that like covers them if they want it to be covered. Like one time, we couldn't ship the knives. We had knives from yeah, the factory, that's, that's... and the shipping company's like, "We can't accept these." And we're like, "Why not?" And they're like, "Well, they're weapons." And we're like, "No, they're not." They're, like, they're, they're knives. How do you think we export the <laughs> yeah. knives to the world? Yeah. How do you think they got here from the factory? <laughs> Anyways, and long long story short, we got it all sorted out. But like. That's just one of those weird things where it's like, anyways, uh, don't mess, don't mess with your laws. They'll, they'll obey the law. Always obey the law. Uh, don't, don't get yourself into trouble and don't, don't test the laws because you're going to find out and you don't, you don't want to be the martyr. Mm -hmm. Um, pretty how, yeah, don't get disqualified like I did. Didn't know, uh, they were so stringent to be honest. Um, I'm assuming Pretty How is writing about the Indigo Invitational. Did you uh, did you oh. not submit your photo in time? Let us know. You got to submit your photos on time. You got to submit your photos on time. Um, uh, uh, Oyster369 writes, I'll be coming to the New York City store soon. Looking forward to getting a pair of jeans. Well, thank you very much. We, we love to have you there. We will be there in January at some point. We'll Probably one of those nights that we're there because we're going to be there for trade shows. Um, we will do the meet and greet that we didn't get to do last time in the summer um, because because I got sick. Um, but we'll do it this time. Um, hopefully. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if, all, if all goes well. Sorry. The... Uh, 
the brightness of this room is. We need one day we'll buy a house and have a studio. Oh, yeah. one day we have a good auto setting camera. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, Sebastian Piljay, this is, I guess, a, a Wonder Looper question. Is there any shrinkage on the double heavyweight crew neck t-shirts? Very, very little. There's always shrink, no matter what it is, whether it's jeans, sweatshirts, t-shirts, you name it, there's always going to be some shrinkage from the wash. And, because it's a cotton yeah. material. So, yeah, just tug it a little bit, mm -hmm. and it's going to come back to shape. Mm -hmm. This Again, this goes with t-shirts, sweatshirts, jeans, whatever it is. I've recently had a customer messaging me about some they were new to rod denim wore their jeans for a while and you know how it is you've you did your first wash mm -hmm. and all of a sudden your jeans aren't your jeans anymore you know you, you you got into raw denim you got your first pair you wore them for five six seven eight months mm -hmm. you got used to the way that they looked they're starting to fade a little bit you put them in the wash come out a little bit more blue, they come out a little bit more tight, and you're like, these are not the same jeans that I just had, that I've been bonding with for months. Mm -hmm. And that is a very stressful time, I think, for some folks. Um, I get it. Yeah, I, I get it, 100%, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've been there, my, I remember my very, very first pair of raw jeans after my first wash, they were blue, and they were bl like black blue before, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like, this, this doesn't go with the re the rest of everything anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I had a whole... Everything was designed around... My whole outfits and wardrobes were designed around this color. Now it's a different color. And anyways, it, it, you start to... You, obviously, you learn how it, how it goes, but... Yeah. You just... Uh, yeah, there's... You know, every time I cut my hair, I hate it for mm. the first couple, you know, days until you get used to it and you just adjust to it. And right. I think with jeans, it's kind of similar to, yeah. like... You will, like, you know, it's, like, the more you wash, the more you wear, obviously, it molds to you. Like, color-wise, it might not be, you know, this this logic might not apply, but, like, you know, the, the fade and the, you know, the, sh the shrink in certain parts and all that stuff, that's just all part of it. It's yeah. going to be a perfect pair yeah. of jeans. But uh, I had to talk them back from just kind of freaking out about the shrinkage. Mm -hmm. And they're like, they were, they were not this tight before. Now they're super tight. I can hard, like I, they're, I can hardly get them on. And you know, it was a Sanfrey's denim. So like shrinkage, you know, they must've stretched out probably maybe three, 5%. And then they shrunk back down to like, you know, probably a little bit smaller than they were when he first got them. Mm -hmm. And he was just freaking out. And I'm like, this is normal. He's like, I tried stretching them. I pulled them. I'm like, it's going to take couple of hours of wear, put them in, do some lunges. Like the amount of stretch that I can get out of, like sometimes I'll put my jeans on, you know, into the wash. They go, all my jeans go into the dryer, by the way. And uh, they shrink. And sometimes I put them on, I'm like, whoa, these are tight. But like, yeah. I, but I, aggr squats? yeah, I aggressively squat and like, yeah. you know, stretching them and like, they're good in like, you know, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but. Again, it's like not anything special to jeans or t-shirts or anything like that. It's just how how the how how clothing is, how cotton is. Yeah, um, yeah it's just uh, embrace it. Yeah, it's part of it. If you uh, steam the jeans, um, that will also help them relax easier. Uh, yeah, if you pull like when it's fresh, yeah. it's it's probably better yeah. than yeah. you leave it for hours and yeah. then then stretch it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Uh. Em Emilio Hernandez about the knives. Amazon package knife for me. Yeah, yeah. My knives in this country are strictly for opening, opening packages and cutting down boxes. In this country. Yeah, I used to in Canada. I used to carry a knife with me, oh, oh, eat, yeah, but yeah, I cannot yeah. do that here. I don't. I don't mess around. I'm not. I'm not messing around here. But it's like you carry, it and what are you gonna do with it? Where are you? What going? if you need to open a box somewhere? You sometimes you need a knife. All right. But like in Canada, I would go to the office and and open boxes and cut down boxes. And you now life. live in the office. Now I live in the office. Uh, but yeah. You never know when you you need a tool. I well, I used to carry a Swiss Army knife when I was uh, younger, and yeah, you know. Well, what? you can carry the like small knives. I'm not messing around here. What? Those are just like six nope, centimeters. Not doing it. I will not do it. 
So it's something like thing is is completely legal. Won't do it. Uh, but it had a uh, a screwdriver on it, and I would I always remember thinking to myself, "What am I ever going to need a screwdriver?" On? And then one day I needed the screwdriver, and I had it with me, and it saved the day. You ride like a bicycle. Don't ride uh, a bicycle. I don't know. Bicycle. Maybe you need a wrench more than I don't know. I don't know uh, how to repair yeah, a bike. Yeah, wrench. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, Alex K. <laughs> uh, one more Wonder Looper question. Um, what size is Bayshead wearing in the hoodie for the promo images? I'm wearing a me. I wear a medium. I wear a medium in everything. Uh-huh. In Naked and Famous, I wear medium everything. I wear size 32 in basically everything. Um, I wear a medium practically across the board. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have monkey long arms. That's just one thing about me. So sometimes some some things are a little bit short on my arms, but uh. But that's it. I, I I wear I'm a I'm a pretty standard medium. Um okay. Uh Emilio Hernandez, I'm about five wears away from my first wash, getting a bit nervous mm. of the UB uh twenty one ounce. Mm-hmm. The UB twenty one ounce is a beautiful fading denim. It's gonna be a very, very different gene after you wash it. But mm. it's an exciting part of the process. And uh anyways, now that you know. Like, you know, I, I think if somebody told me, when I was in getting into raw denim, there wasn't a lot of people telling me. There wasn't a lot of information at all, you know, or especially like around feelings and expectations, right? You know, you saw the gene at the start and then you saw a gene that was fading. You're like, wow, they're going to look like that. That's really cool. But, you know, there's a lot of emotion that goes into it uh, yeah. along the way. But uh, yeah, just be prepared that like they're, they're going to be a little bit different. Um, and that's just part of the process. Um and, and and they will continue to always be different, you know, every six to eight months uh, as you as you wear them. Yeah, you uh, might be uh, pleasantly surprised. Though, yeah, especially if they fade a lot, and then you're like, "That's what I was aiming for," and you get it mm-hmm. for sure. Um, Mike Hawk writes, uh, "Hey, when when will you guys be getting Elephant XS in stock again?" Also, I would love to see more men's 2% stretch denim in around the 14, 15, and 16 ounce range. We won't be getting any more XS in stock. Um, With our seasonal collections, it's always a one and done. Generally speaking, it's always a one and done. Um, There will be the Elephant 11S coming in the spring. So uh, for another heavy weight uh, uh, stretch option, you're you're gonna have another option very, very soon. Our, our plans with the Elephant Series is always uh, 100% cotton in the fall, followed by the 2% stretch or stretch version in the spring. That said, we um, one one new development that uh, one, of the, one of the mills was showing us was um, more flexibility in the heavyweight stretch mm-hmm. range. So that's exciting. Ooh, the sun is coming out. Um, how do we look there? Okay, sorry. The color is gonna constantly change the entire live stream. Um, so the fact that we're gonna be able to get a stretchier denim in a heavyweight form is very, very exciting. It's still in development now. They haven't quite hit the above nineteen ounce range for it right now. They were showing us a couple tests. But uh, I think in the next couple of seasons, we're going to be able to get an elephant stretch denim that is, you know, quite flexible right off the bat. Right now, there's a little bit of stretch in there. It'll activate after you wash it, as you wear it. it you act, if, if you get it right away, like the Elephant XS or the Elephant 11S, you may not even realize there is stretch in there. Um, but uh, it'll, it'll take a little bit of a while, to, uh, a little bit of a while to activate. Yeah. Um, uh, Rob Rosenfield writes, what's the naked and famous equivalent to UB622 relaxed tapered stretch salvage ready to level up? I would say easy guys, stretch salvage. Um, yeah. So that's, that's a 12 and a half ounce. So it's slightly heavier, Mm -hmm. um, uh, relaxed tapered fed. So it's similar fed to UB6 series. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's. It's a core product. We also have an 11 on stress salvage in uh, Easy Guy as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's fabric wise, it's pretty similar. I, it, it just looks a little bit different because uh, 
the the eleven on stress salvage in and negative famous, we use a very orange thread. Yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah, it, it it has a different look. So it just depends on what yeah uh, what you want. Or go into the hundred percent cotton world. You know, get a pair of left hand twills. Uh, thirteen point seven five ounce rigid. Um, you know. Uh, another another way of experiencing raw denim. So I find that some people will enter the raw denim world, uh, starting with a stretch option. You know, it's comfortable. It's something that they're they're familiar with. Uh, maybe coming from like the non raw denim world, and then work their way up to the hundred percent cotton, and mm-hmm. and sometimes work their way up in terms of weight. Mm-hmm. Your your journey is gonna be fun. You know, you're gonna you're gonna go from stretch to hundred percent cotton, the yeah. heavyweight, the slubby. You're gonna get a black denim in there. It's gonna be a wild ride. I think the the beauty of Negative Famous is that there's so much option, like not just seasonal, you know, things, but like we always have like so many basics that you can like really like unbranded. It, we, you know, we try with variations, but it's definitely not even close to the, the, the level of Negative Famous. Yeah. So you have lots to experiment yeah, with. Lots to explore for sure. Um, BD, my boss stopped me when I got to work wearing my red flannel and jeans and asked who they were dressed as today. Me. It was me. Boss dressing like you. I I love it. BD, keep sharing your, your, your outfit photos on Instagram. We'll keep sharing them with the community as well. Um, it'd be, it'd be kind of I funny like if we all just did a, you know. Like homage to yeah, like yeah, somebody yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, that, like I'm just like my friend uh, You know, maybe uh maybe on Monday I'll I'll do an outfit and I'll say, All right, everybody do your version of this outfit. You know, we'll do a flannel and jeans and work boots kind of thing. And it's like, all right, it's uh flannel no, no, Monday. No, what's funny is like like ask ask everybody to dress like you and see what they come up with. Okay. Like, you know, like what do they think you dress like? Oh, I'm all you know over the I mean? map. I don't have a I don't have a one look. Yeah. Uh, but like yeah. what is more like it's it's nice funny to find out like what they think is I don't want to know. Stuff. <laughs> 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 kind of is a good experiment. Yeah, it could be funny. Um uh Nicholas writes, does the waist tend to stretch more after multiple washes? I swear my current pair are a little looser after stretching out after the first wash. Um depends it really yeah. depends especially if you are wearing uh stretch denim like the stretch recovery will degrade over time it's it's not a forever forever thing yeah like but- we we tend to work with very high quality stretch that it does have good uh stretch yeah it'll last a retention. long time but you know if you you know wear it often wash it often then that might be what's happening like I when I wore black power stretch, those I again I torture tested those. I never had an issue with the stretch recovery after. Yeah, well, like uh, years power of wear. Stretch is, is another yeah. monster, but like you know, if you're deficient stretch or like but, power stretch, like it's it's like yeah. that strength is uncomparable to other stretch. Yeah, but even our other stretch that I've never really had an issue. Like no, I've know, never been able to that's, wear that's out. I've never been able to wear out the stretch in one of our stretch jeans. What like compared to like owning, um, you know, an LA kind of brand washed down acid wash stretch denim, where I've been able to wear out the stretch in those in months. Oh, it's a first wash. Yeah. Sorry, I missed the question. I didn't read it. Um. After the first wash, yeah, it's not stretch like recovery issue. It might be just that you know it's it's like the the reason why your waist stretches is because you need that room. Like you you don't feel like you need that room when you're standing up, but you do need that room when you're like sitting down, bending uh, over, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, maybe if you're sitting longer, you might have like more stretch than than that you would otherwise yeah does the tend to stretch more up maybe it also after multiple washes i swear my car a little loose after stretching after my first wash usually yeah, just wash like resets that that stretch yeah. out uh amount um to to bring it back to like basically where you started yeah 
but also, I mean, after, if you've been wearing them for a while, they'll probably stretch out faster because there's some kind of memory built into the elasticity. Mm -hmm. uh, at least it's been able to like be worked in. So it might stretch out a little bit uh, sooner or quicker, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think maybe that's what you're asking. Do they, will, maybe will they stretch out faster? after you've been wearing them and yeah. washing them multiple times. But, Sadly, uh, there is no, like, exact science to this. Like, you know, every body and every washing scenario, it's, it's just, it's different. So, yeah. I mean, we can't really say that, that this is what's going to happen to your jeans. Yeah. Uh, Michael Udall, my wife and I went to an antique store yesterday and I got four milk glass mugs. When did you and Risa get into collecting mugs? Uh, probably over t over a ten years ago, I'd say. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. I've I've been collecting for a long time. Um, yeah, luckily I, you live in the side of the world where you can find them in the wild easily. We can find them here, but they're all expensive. They're very expensive. Um, you know, we were in a shop the other day and. They had the exact mug that we had, and I mean, they're asking for almost a hundred dollars for it. So, like, they can get, they can really get up there in in this side of the world. Um, I mean, I, I guess you know, a lot of people when they see them here as, uh, I mean, they're they're just like any other American vintage kind of item, and it's uh, they they become quite collectible. And some people just like want to have one, you know, in their in their home because it's cute. But uh, yeah, I can never just have one of anything. I need to have no, but it's like almost all of the the milk glass that we have now, like it's it's uh, accumulated in the past five years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's like it it's just kind of you know your interest started here, but it just it, what it what yeah. It, what At some point, you get really really like, yeah. really into the mood. Yeah, yeah, and then you just right. Um, yeah, I've I've had I've, I've I mean I've definitely had them for a long time. But yeah, the last, yeah, you're right. The last like five years or so was really when we rock it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we would go in and buy, if like, we'd go into a flea market and buy practically everything we saw. I think it's also like part of it is that the, like, you know, the price is going up too. Yeah. And you realize how much they're charging in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, wow. Yeah, when you're getting again. them for like a buck or two, yeah. you're like, buy them all. It doesn't <laughs> matter if you need it or you don't need it. Just buy it, add it to the pile and deal with it later yeah um but yeah that's that's my method of collecting um so i would not recommend that for everybody uh you know if you uh sorry I'm just trying to adjust the lights here um yeah i've got a nice beam in my face uh okay um venomous teddy i've been wearing a pair since august first wash in a few days good luck First wash, let us know how it comes out. Um, BD, I think you've talked about how you've chosen patches for a jean, but have you ever done it the other way around after getting a patch that blew you away? Mm, I don't know. I mean, we've definitely seen leathers that are like unbelievable. They're so beautiful and we're like, we need to use this. But I've never developed a denim based, based off, off of, of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's a hard one. Because denim, yeah. Because patch, is, the patch is, there isn't so much, like, because it's leather. Like, it's it's pretty, like, direct from the source kind of thing. Whereas, like, denim, there's just so much, like, you can play with. And so much, like, I don't know, planning goes into, to like, making denim fabric rather than... Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what we sell. Like, you know, yeah. we sell what's... I suppose that, you know, we if we saw like a hair on hide, like, you know, leather. We could have been like, oh, well, maybe we should do like a cowboy theme denim and then look for a denim. Like, I I could see it going the other way. Right. Like if yeah. there's a particular leather and we're like, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. It, right? it kind of goes in the back, you know burner for a bit and then it's like oh no you know what what's best like what's best a uh, little patch for this type of denim mm. will be that and then we can make a theme out of it yeah yeah like you can put together it, but it like developing a, a, a denim based off of 
Yeah, I, I, I could see it happening. I, I just, I guess we never think of it that way. It's always a denim first approach. Yeah. Like you pick the denim. Yes. And, and then I'm you're like. To explain why. Yeah. It's, it's uh, because, you know, we are a denim company. Sure. But I mean, we look at a lot of leather. We do. We definitely look at a lot of leather. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, anyways, it could go. It could go. It could go either way, but I guess it just doesn't. Maybe we'll, I'll think of it that way next time we see some cool leather. Mm-hmm. Just opens, opens, uh, opens the mind. Uh, Andrew, I got a pair of MIJ7s that developed some distressing in the back left. I think due to some odd belt abrasions. Should I be able to take my hemmed fabric to a tailor and, and patch it up? Uh, I mean, if it's uh, if necessary. Um, you know, if you've developed a hole or something like that, sure, you could patch it up like that. Um, if it's not too serious, I mean, you could just let it ride for a while. Um, if it's something that you feel needs to be fixed, then go ahead. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of getting, uh, when you hem a jean with us, you get the scraps. Um, so, you know, you can use them for some small repairs and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, with, with any kind of repair, you can use that fabric. Use a different fabric. Sometimes it's fun to use different fabrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do do. It. Anyways, it's up to you. It's your call. But a contrast repair is generally my preferred repair. Um, it's because like repairing, it's never gonna look like. like never gonna look brand new. Yeah, it's yeah. not gonna look the same way as the rest of the jean. Um, anyway, so might as well play around with it. It's. Uh, Maybe my my idea, yeah. but I if they're know. heavily faded in that area, like say you have like a really heavily faded jean, and then like the knee blows out and you need to put a patch in the knee, it could be cool to use the original fabric in the knee because at that point it is contrast, and then you can see like yeah, yeah, yeah. the difference from like new to you know yeah. worn in. Yeah. Um, the only thing you probably want to keep is just like you know if it's a hundred percent cotton, use a hundred percent cotton, you know fabric to patch it up but yeah other than that I, I mean you can do anything you can you can you know use a lighter weight heavier weight it really doesn't matter yeah have fun with it have fun with it uh the raven which of your core essentials would you recommend for cold windy weather something that could work in 15 celsius um would you recommend for cold windy weather um i mean the left hand will kind of works for everything. That's that's my solution. That's like my chicken soup. It works for everything. Um, it's it's heavy enough, but l- let me let me put it like depends on how much time you're spending outside, right? Like fifteen also is not bad. Like fifteen Celsius is yeah. I mean, I, I it's guess not fifteen it can, Fahrenheit. It's fifteen Celsius. Yeah. I, I guess it can be like not a little chilly if it's windy yeah. but it's not like you need a, a you know super heavy weight yeah 15 is cold and windy i'm thinking i thought 15 fahrenheit for a second no yeah yeah because yeah. uh 15 celsius to me that's not cold you that's not cold and windy yeah i wear a t-shirt in that weather um you know when you go to even to like my like if you go down to minus 15 celsius i would say like yeah, the left hand tool would be fine. I'd have no problem with that. Um, but again, it depends on how much time you're spending outside. You got the proper boots and socks and stuff on. Um, but I think that would be a, a fine jean to wear in that weather. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I mean, the, the only factor here is the wind. So if you wanted to get uh, like a maybe more tightly woven fabric, yeah, probably, probably cut the wind okay. I mean, even the left hand toe is not a particularly loose woven yeah, fabric. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anything that's crunchy, like yeah. dirty fade is a good dirty one. Dirty fade would probably do yeah. good too. Yeah, yeah. Crunchy, 13 ounce and up, you're probably fine. Um, okay. Sorry, a bunch of questions here. Um uh okay bd thickest comfy socks on tatan yoko um i mean we have the anonymous of socks just look for anything that looks particularly thick and uh puffy yeah uh, and you'll be fine um yeah i can't think of one specific there are some wool blend ones in there if you really want some like you know nice nice winter 
uh, warmth in your socks. Uh, but yeah, any anything on Tatian Yoko from Anonymousism that looks like thick and warm and cozy is yeah. going to be thick and warm and cozy. They <laughs> definitely are. Um, you know, there's some ankle socks. Obviously, they're ankle socks. Maybe not the best for your winter. Um, but uh, they'd be okay for home. But uh, but yeah. Um, okay. Matthew Jennings, when you see a blowout is near, what do you do to prevent slash repair it? Uh, a blowout is near. So we're talking maybe, you know, a tiny, tiny little hole like that. Um, I would I would start patching. Yeah, you can patch, or if it's too, like, if if you haven't even gotten to to to, to close to that yet, then you can, you know, I mean, darning is also a thing mm -hmm. where, you know, if you take it to a tailor, I'm sure a lot of the tailors would be able to do, um, you know, there's, there's so much, like, skill in that, like, if you want it perfect looking, then you might have to seek, uh, like, yeah, a very, specialty denim yeah. person, but... It's not, I don't think it's necessary, um, you know, kind of p part of the fun with denim repairs, especially is I like visible repairs. I like it when it looks like you've worked on the jean because over time, it's just like these battle scars that you've, you've put yeah, on your, your, your garment. Character. So, yeah. So, um, I mean, you can, you can also like watch, there's, there's so much like resources in on like YouTube and everything. Like I always like watch a couple of videos before I do anything because you know, like I don't, I, I didn't, you know, like professionally like learn mm. anything. It's just like you pick up some skills. And yeah. You, you, if you see a bunch, then you can like kind of like decide what you want to do. And then you just follow. The yeah. Process. On YouTube for real, like a lot of the stuff I've learned for like denim repair comes from like these homemaker type channels mm -hmm. and they have better denim repair content than like any broad denim brand mm -hmm. has ever put out. And it's just like such basic stuff. You're like, and it's so easily and nicely explained. Mm -hmm. Go on YouTube, look up denim repair, like, you know, better homes or whatever is going to have some kind of, uh, you know, video on it and they'll explain it perfectly. And, uh, there's really no wrong way. You know, if you, if you can use a needle and a thread and, you know, sew a piece of fabric around it, even like jankily, that'll probably, you know, be fine. And uh, you can work your way up from there. Um, uh, okay. Um, uh, Matthew Jennings writes, super soft, weft, exposed, no holes. Uh, yeah. A anyways, the, the, the same thing applies. I mean, just putting a, a little patch inside. You know what's an even easier repair? Or iron-on patches. Um, you can go on, on Amazon and look up like iron on denim patches and they're meant for repair. You can, there's YouTube videos and there's videos on like how to apply it, but it's basically like an adhesive kind of piece of a denim with like an adhesive on it. You put it on, you iron it on mm -hmm. and it just, it works. It's yeah. kind of like putting on an iron on patch on something, but uh, you apply it from the inside or you can apply it from the outside and it'll patch everything up real nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Um, uh, okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm going to show you guys something because we've got something new to show you. All right. So you guys know we've been, uh, I've been wanting to expand out the MIJ series quite a lot. Um, you know, the MIJ series for a long time has been one product a season, basically, mm -hmm. sometimes not even that. We've got the MIJ 10 coming, mm -hmm. which is the Okayama Spirit. Mm -hmm. So the Okayama Spirit is coming back. It is going to be in MIJ form. Yeah. Then we've got the MIJ 11, the Tokushima hand-dyed uh, natural Kakashibu dye. That's going to be super limited. Very, very, very limited run. Then we've got MIJ... 12 and 13 planned mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh i'm gonna adjust this exposure here so that it i gotta you know what I, nobody you're gonna show the denim like no i know i just it was too bright sorry my uh my setup here it's not ideal um it's blasting me uh okay so we've got not mij 12 could be but it's gonna be mij 13 just because it's black 
and my J13. Sample is here. Leather patch, we're still waiting on it, but it's going to be very, very nice. Very, very nice leather. All black version of the Okayama Spirit. So uh, we just got the samples in. We, as, as you guys can see, you know, we're, we're kind of quickly expanding the MIJ line. Um, you know, MIJ 10 is coming. It'll probably be ready in the early new year, likely. Um, followed by, uh, no, 10, 11. Those are going to be, you know, in, in early 2023 kind of drops. Um, these will probably be ready for, I'm thinking when, uh, probably the summer. Fall. Yeah, summer into the fall. So uh, a very early preview here. Lighting is not ideal, I know. But MIJ, all black. Get ready for some slubby black fading denim. Look at that tiny little salvage ID here. Looks great. So that's coming very soon. We're going to fix that. There we go. Maybe that's a little better for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's hard yeah. to see the texture with black, but yeah. it is amazing. The texture it is... is the okay, my spirit. Yeah. It's, it's so nice. It's on some fries that I'm can be treated. You get all these like just, you know, wrinkles bumpy. and folds yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It, it might be hard to see here, but I, I guarantee you, you will love it. And if you, if you've, you know, you haven't got a pair of black jeans yet, this is definitely one that is going to knock your socks off. Um, I'm a big fan of black denim. I faded out the solid black selvage for the Indigo Invitational 2. I've worn a lot of black denim over the years. A lot of pairs of black power stretch. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I think, you know, we've definitely talked about this before. Um, even alluded to it a little bit earlier in the live stream. Just, you know, your, your raw denim journey, um, you know, might start off with a stretch denim. Mm -hmm. You get into a 100% cotton raw. You start working your way up, you know, in terms of weight, slubby. Yeah. You get a black denim. You get uh, a gray denim. Uh, you start getting into ducks and canvases and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at some point, you've got a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you just kind of sample it all. And if, if you you haven't got your black pair yet, I, I, I guarantee you will be very happy with this pair. And so... With the MIJ line, we are we are expanding in terms of fabrics. We're gonna expand in terms of jackets. So we've got the the you know the classic trucker style. We're gonna have the more vintage style, uh, type two style jacket coming soon. So there's gonna be a lot. I, there was a lot of fabrics that um, we saw during our uh, our tour of the Okayama region uh, that are you know perfect for MIJ. So. Um, with MIJ, you know, there will be no, no hold back, you know, but they get famous. Sometimes it's like, you got to hold back a little bit just cause we want to operate in a certain price point, mm -hmm. but with MIJ, I don't care. Like the price is the price because the fabric is the fabric. Like if it costs that much because it's the best top, you know, we, we're using every possible way to make it the best possible fabric then it's going in and yeah. if it costs a little bit more costs a little bit more but you're gonna see it you're gonna know why and uh you know there'll be a lot of story and explanation for mm -hmm. and you know because you guys you know we were we were having a dinner with uh you know some people from the mill the other night and we were just talking about uh you know they're talking about like how do you like market and things like that i'm like you know we talk directly with our customers all the time mm -hmm. and because we do this, because we talk to you guys, we put out, you know, you know, I think I, what I think a nice blog post and we put out the videos and we try to explain what we do. We try to explain our processes as best we can. You know, we're able to educate you guys and let you guys know more and more about, you know, the nuances of denim, what makes denim nice, what makes it special. And because you guys understand what we do, we can then push it forward mm -hmm. and create better and better because if you didn't know about natural indigo or you know special dyes or special weaves or things things like that if you didn't know what those were and you were to just 
somebody would just say, hey, there's, here's a $300 jean. It wouldn't mean anything to you, mm -hmm. right? And it could it could be the best thing mm -hmm. and the most artisanal thing, the most beautiful thing. But because you don't understand it, it doesn't resonate with you. Mm -hmm. So because you guys know more, we can create we can create the best because you, that's not to say that we, we wouldn't be able to make it. It's just, if there's no audience for it, mm -hmm. then th there's no, there's no point to mm -hmm. make it right. You have to have, you know, you have to have a base where they can appreciate it as much as you so that you can take the effort to make it and put it out there. So, yeah, well, it's important. It's a job to, to make sure that you guys know what is so special about it. And, you know, like, obviously, like, all the questions that you guys ask are very important because sometimes we forget, like, you know, we, like, for us, like, you know, like we, there were times that we didn't know anything about denim, but that's just so long ago that sometimes you forget. And and uh, so it, it's just important to directly communicate with you guys and see what uh, what is, you know, appreciated, what is already known or what is, like, more mystery. Um to you guys yeah so yeah it's it's you know the the reason also we we do like these mijs and it's like yeah like it's it's expensive to make anything in japan but it's you know it's not we're, we're not doing this because it's expensive or because it's japan we're doing this because they have the ability to do things that that a certain way that we may not be able to do in canada currently so it's just like one of those things where like, yeah, it, it costs more, but it's not like we're trying to make more money with this because we make it in Japan or anything like that. And I, 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 we just need to make sure that like all these like things that makes it expensive or makes it special is like clear to you guys. Yeah. So you, you can decide if it's worth it, right. worth your money yeah. or not. For us, MIJ is just, we want to push the limits. Yeah. We want to put, we want to, this is where we can say, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know much about cars, but like, you know, there's, uh, there's like the, 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 shell, the, the Shelby Cobra, right? You mm -hmm. know, like there's the Fords and then there's, here's where we make the crazy stuff, right? Right. right. And like, that's for the super enthusiast, mm -hmm. but also if there's people who can afford it. There's people who can appreciate it, mm -hmm. but it's also for us to be like, Here's where we can push things and mm -hmm. we can test things and we can try the craziest. And some of it will go into Naked and Famous as the main line. Because, of course, we're going to have crazy fabrics there, too. Don't get me wrong. But, like, the more we can push, 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 the more we can do, do, do. And then, mm -hmm. anyways, more yeah. beautiful denim for everybody, I guess. But one thing to note is that, like, you know, we, we Naked and Famous, we wholesale our products, too. So that, you know, we, we can be our products can be sold in like many many retailers across the world but you know when it comes to mij we kind of like you know sometimes it's like a, a, a buyer from a store you know like a, a big box store that doesn't have like you know salesperson mm -hmm. explaining all these products and stuff like that and then they approach like oh can we buy this for a store and it's like we tend to not encourage that because it's like well but you you're not going to be able to tell the story yeah you don't have a staff that just knows everything about the, the stuff that they carry and then they can talk to yeah. the consumers about it so it's like this is something special and we kind of limit our, our distribution, like, distribution because yeah. of that yeah it's uh i always like there's that documentary jiro about uh, the sushi yeah. restaurant here in yeah. japan and like there's one point where the rice supplier for this guy it's like, oh, yeah, all these hotels and, like, you know, fancy restaurants are asking me for the rice that we sell to you. And he's like, I could sell it to them, but they don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, if you were to put this in, like, certain stores, they could ask for it mm -hmm. and say, you know, we want to carry it. But it's like, you already, you know, like, because you don't sell this kind of caliber of product, it's it's not going to do well there. Yeah. Right? The best thing you can do, like the, the person who's buying it, not knowing how to use it, yeah. they, what best thing they can do is to say that like, oh, I have the same rice as, you know, yeah. that sushi restaurant. Right. Uh, it's, and that's, it, it does happen, I think, in, in this industry too. Sure. Like, oh, we use the same fabric as, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's like, that yeah, doesn't give you, you any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, 
here's a crazy thing I learned from from this trip. This is the craziest thing I learned from this. This is kind of I'm just taking the car right now and going. Rrr! Okay, I don't know where you're going. So there are products we've heard of. Like you know, there's counterfeit products everywhere, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've I've look not that counterfeit naked famous is a problem. I've seen it, but it's not a pro- like it's not like uh, widespread it's not a widespread problem. Like, yeah. I've seen it in like Thailand markets, like mm-hmm. where you go to the fake market and they have fake everything jeans. Yeah, I've seen right. our fake jeans. Yeah, okay, that's it, a sign of us making it. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's not like uh, on eBay. There's like fake naked famous jeans. There's right, right. just it's, it's not, just it's not, not a, it's not a thing, mm-hmm. right? So one of our mills was telling us that in one of these, uh, anyways. I'm not going to name which country, but uh, they they were having a trade show and a mill was pretending to be them. He's like, they had our sign, they had everything. And it was like, wow, man, this is crazy. Like, that's crazy. Because like you see, there are, you know, a lot of raw denim brands that kind of pop up here and there. And... Uh, and they say like, oh, we buy denim yeah, from this yeah, mill but, and that mill. The, like... Like it, it, it adds yeah. them. But, but like no major company is yeah. doing this. Like it would always be like these. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. If, if, Anyhow, I found that, anyway, I'm not, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus or anything like that. But I just thought that that was the craziest thing. But it also at some level to me made sense because sometimes I see products coming from certain countries that are so obviously inspired by other raw denim brands like not even a little bit just a lot Mm -hmm. and it's like huh yeah it makes sense that they would also go even further to be like oh well we're just gonna also copy the mills name like we're gonna go so far as to just you know fake that this fabric comes from this mill about this is that like you know like at at the you know at this side like Mm -hmm. brand side like there are brands that you know really really like um try to replicate cer- certain brands like you know old school jeans that they don't they no longer make or whatever yeah. and they just like try to replicate that and that's like i don't i don't think that's you know like a a, a good business but yeah. i also you know don't care i i, I understand you're, you're like so into like trying to remake the glory of yeah. you know whatever it's not oh, necessarily a bad bad you know bad thing but like this one for instance is that like you know like they're trying to 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 sell fabric as as a mill that is you know famous and Mm. respected but you're selling like not good fabric like it's obvious that you're selling a bad fabric and you're just like that's that's not even like you're trying to be like them you're you're just like taking the name so that's very different i think yeah very different um, speaking of reproductions, mm-hmm. one thing that we learned, and so I'm, I'm often critical of repro because I often think that repro isn't as repro as they claim to be. You know, my problem with repro is often like, I, 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 I this, this is an entire essay, but certain aspects of it, you know, if you want to make, uh, if if you're going to claim to make like an authentic american style whatever then you have to use it has to be made in america it has to be used with the same machines there's a, there's just there's like a whole chain of things it's not just the fit right the fit is one part of repro but like if i look again you can dissect this a, a thousand different ways but yeah. we learned that a uh, a spinning mill here that we work with obtained a 50s era uh, cotton spinning machine so that they could authentically we'll see how they're in development right now but that they can authentically create yarn that is i guess kind of era era uh correct is that the word i'm thinking of you know time period correct so that they can then use those yarns to make you know whether it's knitwear or jeans or whatever uh, that would be closer to repro, and I think that that's like you know an interesting aspect because like when you when you talk about repro, like well where when you 
like the yarns that they're getting like is the cotton from the same area but but it's also spun on modern machines and the modern machines they they're, they are uh mechanically controlled to be you know slubby or something like that so like as kind of random as it looks it's actually mm-hmm. not that random because it's 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 programmed in right yeah. it's computerized but when you use an old spinning machine that is just not it's kind of like with selvit like uh, with the shuttle loom like mm-hmm. The shuttle loom, a lot of the character comes from the fact that it is not a computer operated, you know, machine. Like there's a lot of uh, uh, character that just comes from the way that the machine is, you know, tweaked, you know, how the gears are, are, are adjusted and how the machine rattles and how old it is. So like, you know, a certain machine, like you can make the same fabric on two different machines that are sitting side by side to one another and they'll both be a little bit different, mm-hmm. right? They'll have their, their own little, each machine will have its own little characteristic. So when it comes to, uh, and that's, you know, part of the beauty of that. So the fact that maybe we'll be able to get access to this kind of yarn that is naturally, flawed is not the right word, but naturally inconsistent, inconsistent not mm-hmm. perfect. It will then create a very authentic, you know, repro um of a denim of the of that of that era mm-hmm. I, and i'm very excited for that i think i think that's going to be a good one yeah um okay i see for some reason our chat hasn't updated in a little bit so i'm just wondering if uh if something has frozen here mm-hmm. so um i'm not sure uh, so, so somebody leave a message should... and uh i'll <laughs> say say hello bezad and if it doesn't pop up, then I will know that there is a problem. Oh, All right, there well, we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Right. Venom is having just listening. Hello. Okay. Very good. I appreciate that. Sometimes I think I'm like, maybe it's just story time and everyone's just, you know, quite <laughs> listening. Uh, okay. I see. I see the messages coming through. Okay. I appreciate that. So um, anyways, that was another really interesting development um, that we learned about. That's mm-hmm. very, very exciting. I'm, o- I'm always like... You know, during these trips, you know, they're, one of our last meetings, um, you know, they were showing us all kinds of like new, very naked and famous denim technologies yeah. that they were coming yeah. up with. And I, I was very uh, intrigued by that. Some things were like much more, you know, it's, usable than others. Yeah. But. Um, and, and, and a lot of it, I, I like that they're throwing this, like, obviously they were showing us these like you know, like ideas, like it's in, like it's, they're not finished developing and they just wanted to gauge our interest and in all of that stuff. And then I like it when they're like, when they know what we might like. Yeah, they're, <laughs> and, they're, and, they're, they're on the same wavelength. Yeah. yeah, and they're just kind of like, you know, seeing what, what sticks the most, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So, Pretty cool. Yeah. They had, uh, yeah, some of the stuff I can't, uh, I can't talk about yet because it's too early in development, but uh yeah, there's there's some e- even with all these years and like you know all the thousands of fabrics that we've seen and looked through, mm-hmm. there's always something new to learn and experience and see, and it's always fun to just uh, see what's coming down the pipeline. So you know yeah. we're obviously gonna keep keep the action coming your way. Yeah. So uh, sorry. Uh, no problem. Tim Malley asks, um, "How do the men's fits look on women's bodies?" Asking because there are often uh, so many crazy jeans in guys cuts um i would say that they would depending on your shape i mean if you look at our models on our like on our website like if you're built like some of them oftentimes the guys are pretty slim um they will fit you like the models are on on the website we do have quite a a lot of customers uh that do get into our men's fits um i know we have to do a women's so, uh, we must do a women's guide to men's jeans. Yeah, uh, that's some something I've yeah. been talking about, and yeah. I haven't been, yeah. and I'm very sorry. It's very been sorry. years. Yeah, it's been years. It's we're not uh, we're not a production studio. You know, it's hard. It's hard to to put this all together. But um, we we will hopefully hopefully eventually. That's that's usually my plan. Hopefully eventually. Uh, I apologize for the colors because the sun is just our our. I, we do this right in front of a window, and uh, depending on where the clouds are, it uh, blinds us. 
Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, oh, right. okay. That's a good one. Uh, Nicholas Viplo. I'm overly paranoid about the buttons on my jacket, scratching my watches. I always cuff the sleeves just in case. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, Cause it's like, in, even inside it's mm. a metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would imagine that could be a, you know, but I wonder if you can get uh, like soft pads yeah. like sticky adhesive pads that you can put underneath the metal yeah. on the jacket that's a good point um, or like maybe just put a, a fabric patch yeah and with you know tonal stitching it wouldn't really show on yeah. the, the front that's that's uh that's definitely a concern if you're, if you're wearing a nice watch you definitely mm -hmm. don't want to get those scratched up i often roll up all my sleeves um you know just yeah. like with my jeans i like to wear them short i like to wear my like long sleeve shirts long sleeve shirt like, but i almost always yeah have you it have here. to i don't yeah. know why but it's just like it's it's like unless it's really really cold and I can't have exposed wrists, like yeah. I always have to have exposed wrists. Yeah. That's why this sweater is perfect. Yeah, my <laughs> I don't my 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 when I wear a denim jacket, usually. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's just like a I urge. need to. This needs to be free. This this <laughs> needs to be free. I'm. It's like you... as soon as I get home, I have to take off my socks. Uh -huh. Like that's an urge. Right. <laughs> I cannot yeah. be wearing socks. Right. Uh, Venom study. I invite the scratches on my watch. I don't, unless the watch is like, look, the watch, sometimes this is why I like vintage watches mm -hmm. because they're already a little dinged up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you then don't I don't feel so bad. I don't feel yeah. so bad if there's yeah. a new scotch or whatever happens on it. But if it's a new watch and it's mint, I am, I just baby the hell out of that thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to be into this hobby. Um, so, and, you know, I follow a couple of uh, people on Instagram that do, like, watch repairs, and they have all the machines to, like, rebuff, and they do all I'm like, this is amazing. I'm like, but I, I, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, you know, as much as I, I would love to learn how to do all that stuff, it's just, like, the, the time and the thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment that it would mm -hmm. cost just to, like, buff my watch, I guess I should just take it to a guy who yeah. does that for a living. Yeah. Probably worth it. Um, Probably worth it. Definitely worth it. Okay. Lighting. Okay. Um... Okay, um, such a guide would be awesome. Thanks, team. Tim Maley writes. Yes, we will. Yes, we will try we'll to get that. Try to get that for you soon. Soon. I've said that a lot. Um, okay. Uh, Richard the Great with a tip on the uh, with, a, with a tip for the jackets and the watches. Uh, put a piece of black tape. That's what I do. So black tape on the back of the buttons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that would that would definitely yeah. that would definitely work. Um, All right, let's. Uh, I want to point out a couple questions okay. to answer about release timings. True guy, we will have uh, well, our spring collection, spring yeah. summer 23 collection will include true guy, yeah. So I've... that includes also core too. So, core, we will just you know make them as, as we can make them, and then um, over time, we will have. Um, all of the core and true guy, but um, yeah, I have it on my schedule, but I don't have a date on it. So right, so it's gonna be it's gonna be like sometime in the first half of year uh, next year, we would have yeah. a bunch of true guy coming out. Yeah, so I wouldn't say January, but you know, like sometime in early part of that year. Yeah. Okay, I'm just okay. gonna auto exposure my uh, thing yes, now. I don't know why you don't. Do but that you know anymore. why I don't do it because when you do this or you do this. Yeah, no, I it get just, it. But then it that's that's the, the time really that you turn it off. Yeah. Um, um, and then the the this one, black M I J, uh, will be around next fall. Yeah. Around. Around. Maybe maybe earlier. We will we'll see. But it mm -hmm. is as you can see, it is it is alive and it's in the works. So it that's coming. So the M I J. 12 and 13. Lucky number 13 for the black. Mm -hmm. What's 12? You'll have to wait and see. Did I already tell people what 12 was? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we don't have it to show, so it's uh, yeah. it's a secret. As still. soon as I have it, mm -hmm. yeah. you will have it. Um, does the black fade to gray? David Macy writes. Yes, it does. I will show you what my black I'm not wearing today, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get my pair. Yeah. This has got a pair on, but I'm wearing my uh, solid black selvage. It's not so faded, but as you can see here, I have like a, a 
laundry crease <laughs> right here. But this is the kind of fade that you're gonna get. So the same thing as like indigo dyed, indigo rope dyed uh, yarns. So indigo rope dyed yarns uh, uh, are like white in the core and then layers of layers and of indigo goes on top of the white core yarns. And then like when that shape sells, the blue gets brighter, brighter, and then comes to the point where you see white. The same thing with black. Black is uh, 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 not an indigo dye, but it is a sulfur dye that gets uh, uh, dyed the same way, the rope dyeing way as uh, the indigo denim. So the core is white and then the layer of black goes on top of it. And as it fades, it will yeah. be like gray to, you know, the, here it's almost white. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see this is about a year's worth of wear. Um, you know, I'm hoping to get more and more of it. But I mean, for a, for a black denim, I think we I got this faded pretty good in just about a year's amount of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it was, this is the solid black salvage. So, you know, just as black as this uh, when it started. And uh, it's, it's come a long way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is not a particularly slubby denim, the solid black salvage. But you still, you, you can see it. You get a lot of great streaking here with that, but the Okayama Spirit is a much more mm -hmm. slubby mm -hmm. denim. So you're going to get a crazier amount of texture uh, yeah. from this fabric. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And we'll we'll hopefully have some like wash downs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we have done slubby block in the past uh, for just, you know, yeah. Canadian made naked and famous. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what's a good example? Japan Heritage. Japan Heritage yeah. Black. It's pretty similar fabric, but this one's on some starting off on some fries, so I think it will be way more character. Yeah. To this. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, uh, the new MIJ, and we'll have it in jacket. We'll, anyways, probably I mean, we'll put, that hasn't been decided yet. But uh, no, has no. it? Yes. Is it coming? Yes. Okay. So it's coming. We just don't have the sample yet. We just don't have the sample yet. Um, okay. Uh, how many ounces? I, 16, 16, I believe. 16, yeah. 16. Uh, it is Okayama Spirit, uh, one. Yeah. Base. Same as that. Same yeah. base. Yeah. Um, soccer player 15, 16 will also, will true guy be available in the MIJ? Uh, not, not yet. Not at this yeah. time. Yeah. 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 It, it, in the it, future. it will be in the future. Yeah. yeah. The Bane was slubby. Bane, Bane denim was, was very, slubby. very slubby. Yeah. That's true. And stretchy. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, okay. Venom is steady. Will there be uh, some seasonal fabrics in True Guy or just core for now? It'll start with core, but then seasonal. We have seasonals spring. coming for spring. Yeah. Spring yeah. season fabrics yeah. will yeah. be available yeah. in Guy. The core stuff was all supposed to be available for the fall, which kind of got delayed. But uh, as with yeah. many delays, uh, well, core gets yeah. you know pushed back sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. the delays are still uh, abounds. Abound is that a word? A foot? There are still lots of delays in our. Yeah, about words. I don't. I don't, I don't know about words any either. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we're still dealing. There's yeah. every from every direction. There's still delays. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. COVID may be over. Is it over? I don't know. Yeah, well, there's a Anyways. lot of things going on. Yeah. And you know, once you're delayed, it's very difficult to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we're, we're still playing catch up. But I, I think you know we are improving in terms of like we now know how like how much longer it takes now to like. You know, ship a, a fabric on the on the ocean on in the ocean on, on the ocean on the ocean. And if we put it in a on submarine, <laughs> it would be in the ocean. Well, anyway, so now now we're preparing better. So hopefully we'll we'll be better. How much of the ship is under the water anyway? Semantics. I, I have no idea. Um, that would be cool. Submarine shipping, just cause. Yeah, it's it will be slower. You think? Yeah, I don't right. know. It's in the water. You have way more like. I guess so. 
know. But maybe you could build like a, you know, like a, a hyperloop kind yeah. of thing. For you know, it's like some offices, they still have those like tubes where you mm-hmm. send them. The mail. Yeah, the mail. <laughs> yeah. We should have that for rolls of denim. Just from the, okay, I'm a mail. Uh-huh. Zoom. All the way to Canada. We'll build our own pipeline. Just. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the sound it makes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, um, can I talk about something not related at all? Yeah. I just like thought of that that idea, yeah. and like you know, in when we travel to like countryside, we often encounter like you know, there, there's like we have to choose hotels, and sometimes like certain hotels mask as like a regular hotel, oh. but as it turns out, it uh sometimes is a love hotel. If you don't know anything about love hotels, it's it's I don't know if it's only in Japan, but I think I, it's very unique to It's unique to Japan. I mean there's motels in right, America. But motels are for everybody, yeah. including certain activities. But love hotels are for almost exclusively for certain activities. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You might be able to uh guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to go into the details, but like those hotels are designed for like um, discreet like services. So oftentimes there is no reception uh, or even if there is, you don't see that person. Yeah, it'll be in like a, face. you'll just see hands. Yeah. yeah. Nowadays it's all like, you know, Computer. kind of like a vending machine yeah. where like you look up the, the rooms that's empty and you press the button and then the key comes down and you just like self-serve to the the the, yeah. the room and i guess like i was talking to the one of the suppliers about this one because we almost booked a love hotel by mistake well, we did book a love well, I mean, we did and we just decided not to stay yeah, there yeah because it, as it turns out yeah. it was the love hotel and we're talking about it and he was talking he was quite older um and he was talking about like how back in the days i don't know if it's still the case i'm not an expert in this but when you sometimes pay even they have they use that like oh. uh, technology uh. to put like money in this capsule uh-huh. and send it back or like up or down or whatever and that's how they used to pay for a love hotel that's pretty funny mm-hmm. yeah but yeah we almost well we definitely did book it and then we're like uh brandon uh, <laughs> you don't you, you, you don't, don't you don't want to stay, stay here. here it's uh no, but it's it's usually uh, because Japanese, cheaper. Yeah, it's usually cheaper because you can either book by the hour or mm-hmm. you book by, by the, the evening. Night. Yeah, yeah, but even by evening, like it's usually cheaper than business hotels yeah. or like regular hotels. And the the thing is, like Japanese hotels, even the regular hotels, especially business hotels, they're very very small. Like the rooms are tiny and just like the size of the bed. Uh, but love hotels tend to have large rooms yeah nice you know shiny uh bathrooms mm-hmm. and stuff like that and yeah. on pictures sometimes it looks like a nice hotel mm-hmm. for a good value yeah yeah or it looks like an amusement park in there because there's a lot of themed <laughs> ones that, uh, yes. that are funny and if you're curious just look up on youtube and there's all kinds of people who do like tours of of love hotels because uh-huh, uh-huh. i mean it, japanese homes are small so sometimes you need to get away or you know whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, so they're very po- they're everywhere, they're yes. they're literally everywhere, and uh, yeah. Anyways, that's uh, another interesting Japanese fact. Yeah, um, right off the topic. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Lee H. When I visited Osaka, my partner and I booked a love hotel because it was so much bigger and cheaper than normal hotels. Pretty impressed, actually. Well, there you go. Absolutely. I mean, look. Some of them are, are fine, you know, and some of them are weird. And anyways, when you come to Japan, experience everything. Uh, but we're just letting you know what you can and cannot, or should not, would not, could do, whatever it is. Hopefully you guys come to Japan soon. Um, okay. Uh, Richard the Great asks, does ocean wash work towards fading or is it a gimmick? I don't think it's a gimmick. I've done ocean washes before multiple times and I actually did an ocean wash on, on this jean. Now for me, it's not the ocean water that does anything. The sand. It's the sand. 
So when you get into the ocean, what I would do is I would like sit down in the water and I would just kind of rub the sand into my legs and, you know, the water would wash it away. And uh, I felt like that abrasion, whether you want to call it cheating or not, was just like a nice little bit of abrasion that helped, you know, enhance the color and take away a little bit of the, the, the you know, the, the, the dye that's in there. So I felt like that was what I enjoyed mostly about the ocean soak. I don't think the salt water or anything like that does anything in particular. The annoying part of the ocean soak is the fact that there's sand now everywhere in your jeans. Um, they're all over your jeans. They're in every crevice. They're in every pocket. And it's going to take you probably you're going to have to wash your jeans to get all that sand out. So that's definitely the downside. It's fun. Um, I think unlike, you know, putting your jeans in the freezer, which doesn't do anything except make your jeans cold. Yeah. Uh, there's an actual, like, I can, I can say for a fact that it actually does something. So I don't think it's a gimmick. I think it's, you know, is it, is it, is it a, a necessary thing to do? Probably not, but it's a fun it's thing a to fun do. It's a fun thing to do. You know, yeah. it's like sitting in the bathtub with your jeans yeah. or, or taking, taking a, a shower, shower with your jeans on. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the shower with your jeans on. You take, you take the soap, whatever, you rub it into your legs and you're like, you're just washing your jeans on your body, you know? Um, so I, I've, I've done that. Uh, I've never done that. Yeah. Is, that well, uh, is that a guess? I guess so. You can have we do to lock our doors. Um, all right. Looks like we have somebody at the door. Who could it be? What do we got? What do we got here? Hello, everybody. Oh, look. It's a uh, it's a wild Brandon has appeared. Uh, whoa, everybody. It's it's right. the boss. It's uh, we're going to have to get another chair oh. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Reese is going to grab a chair. Oh, nice place you got here. Yeah. Wow, thanks. I like it. Brandon's, Brandon's never been over before. Uh, here he is at, uh, at, at, at Naked and Famous Denim Japan HQ. Um, who's this homeless man, Francisco Michael asks. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's oh, Brandon. Beardy. Brandon Sparrock, the, uh, the founder, the owner of Naked and Famous Denim. He's here live and in person. Everybody is excited for Brandon. KW <laughs> writes, hit the like button for oh. Brandon. So we've got a very, very special guest today. Um, Brandon, tell us... Uh, what, what was your favorite part of our, our mill tours this week? Uh, let's see. Well, we got to, uh, we toured one of the biggest mills and we got to keep, uh, so they, they, there's obviously several steps uh, in uh, denim production and it starts all the way with cotton. So first we could see giant bales of cotton everywhere and see like the different countries that they buy from and just go up and give a big bear hug to a humongous like uh, 5,000 yeah, yeah. pound bale of cotton. How much did they, were they like? 200 kilograms. Oh, okay, so it's a little yeah. bit less than 5,000 pounds. One th dangerous part about the cotton oh, yes. bales is how they oh, they bail yeah, yeah. them with these metal wires mm -hmm. and like the guy very thick metal yeah. wires. and the guy's like like when you cut these if you get yeah. in the way it's gonna take your arm off he, he said yeah. no, yeah. no more arm yeah <laughs> like they're just gonna fly off you're gonna die uh so anyways but then we they're we, very careful when they oh, remove, yeah. them, oh, remove yeah. those uh those metal uh, ties we got to go uh well after that uh they showed us of course uh, rope dyeing and while we were going through the rope dyeing um, uh, facility, they, you know, they had like some samples that, that didn't pass, that, you know, that they cut off or there was little uh, uh, imperfections on them. And so they have like a bucket and they take those and they recycle them. So we said, oh, they're like, it's so beautiful. And they said, oh, would you like to have some? Like, yeah, hell yes, we would. Yeah. So we got to bring home uh, yeah. omiyage. We yeah. got, we got. Uh, do, we, do we have that anywhere? Oh, yeah, you yeah. must yeah. have it. We, we have some. And it's cool too because. Oh, perfect. Uh, because when you when you see the rope dyed yarns and you see them cut off like that, you can actually see what the rope dyeing does. You can see yeah. the the white yeah. uh, inside. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on this little camera. Yeah. I think you will. Yeah. I think you guys will. When you yeah oh uh, yeah, so you can see all the little white uh, uh, dots there. You can see this is like the proof that that is rope dyeing and not just vat dyeing. It's not just sitting in a soup. It gets dipped and pulled out and dipped and pulled out. And it's really cool to see the first dips are quite green. And yeah. as they oxidize through, they become more blue, and then they dip again, and it's darker yeah. green, and oxidize yeah. more to darker blue, and yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, we've got some video of it, Hope, and we'll, yeah. we'll put it together, we'll have yeah. some up on the social media I'm since that you can see. Job, but, but you, you get yeah. the point. Yeah, you get the idea. But yeah, it is really fun to watch all this, in, like these ropes of indigo hanging from the ceilings of this building, and you, you can just see it from like white cotton 
going from like green to like bluer and bluer and bluer and bluer and however, however many dips they, they, they do in that production line. But like you can just watch it, you know, instantly changing color before your eyes. Very, very yeah. uh, fun thing to see. Especially in the first few baths of yeah. indigo. We, mm-hmm. we, we learned a new term. I don't think that, that we've ever uh, learned this one before. But in the first few oh, baths the, of indigo, you'll see, yeah, yeah, you see all the foam bubble up. Like there's yeah. this indigo bubbles, this indigo foam. And they told us it, they call it the flower. Yeah. Bayside has amazing yeah, photos yeah. of it and video of it. He'll eventually post yeah. and everyone will see the fun stuff. But yeah, it's just like, <laughs> it looks like you want to just uh, like take a whole bunch of it. Uh, I don't know. I guess. Yeah. It, it's, uh, anyways, it's like, you, there's this, like, this indigo soup and there's like this froth on yeah. top of it and uh-huh. it's blue and it's very be- beautiful to see. And it, and also the, the, the beauty of that, that part of the mill is that it's so dark inside mm-hmm. and you just see all this like steam coming up from mm-hmm. everywhere. So it's, uh, it's very cinematic in yeah. a way. I, hopefully my, my video quality is good and you get to see all that stuff, but it, it's quite a interesting room to be in for sure, but it also stinks in there. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. It's a factory. Yeah, yeah. You go in and like, you know, you go in and the first thing they'll tell you, I've, I've, I, you know, I, I knew what to expect, but like they, they're like, it smells in here. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm like, you know, what? but like to me, like that indigo smell is like, that's I like that smell. Oh, yes. Like that's indigo. Like. Mm-hmm. It's it's like when we get a, a like a fresh yes. uh, roll like fresh shipment from Japan Absolutely. from the mill and you open up the boxes with all the the, the rolls of denim and you can smell it yes. you can yeah. just smell that it. that times the hundred yeah. and yeah. just like yeah, that's yeah. right as soon as you open up a plastic like if, if yeah. when I'm at home in Montreal yeah. and you get the shipment of, of rolls yeah. open up the plastic and I get that smell I think Okayama yeah. like it reminds me of Okayama yeah it's pretty cool um, BD writes wearing my brand inside Okayama Spirit Forest it was meant. to to be yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go you sign, you sign them at Dutail oh nice yeah, sweet yeah, we love go. Dutail of yeah. course um, doesn't the salt and sweat break down clothing it develops more of a vintage feel the salt and sweat uh, I mean salt and sweat will definitely break down cotton over time but yeah bacteria yeah. And, and salt and sweat yeah it'll, uh, but, it, but it does make your, 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 your jeans patina more beautifully uh, but there is a there is a balance yeah you know once jeans are destroyed they're destroyed so you have to... And also, it destroys first in areas that you don't want it to mm-hmm. be destroyed. Yeah. You know, like yeah. crotch and yeah. stuff. So. It is okay to wash your jeans, yeah, yeah. people. If you want to wash them, you can wash them. Yeah. And if you don't, yeah. don't. Yeah. No, it's all you... it, the fun is uh, it's up to you. Yeah. There you go. You heard it from Brent. <laughs> Francisco Michael, can we put the flower in the denim coffee table book? Well, we'll 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 get some beautiful we'll get some beautiful pictures. Of yeah, it. I'm yeah. sure you have. I have yeah. a few. There, there, you were talking about the darkness and yeah. the light in the factory. I did remark that yeah. as we were walking through because there was one point where the the like I think light did come in from the window and it made amazing like shadows on that. You saw like, oh, yeah. the gradient of blue in the indigo dye. Uh, I, I hope yeah. you got that. I think you, yeah. you probably got it. I got some on my cell yeah. phone. Yeah. Not gonna be as good as your pictures. But. Yeah, Francisco Michael sounds like the factory where they make the T800. It's the Terminator. Right? Oh yes, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> he'll be, he'll be, he'll be back. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Uh, anyways, in in the in the, in the final scenes of Terminator Two at the factory and all that, except with all the mel- melting yeah. steel, uh, it did kind of feel a little bit like that with yeah. all the giant machines and steam. And there was fire. There was. We did a watch little bit. singeing a little bit. Um, so we did get to watch every process of the denim being made. Yeah, there was no yeah. metal melting. Of, uh, no metal no. melting. But we did see that at the. Uh, we did see some metal smelting. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's true. Uh, at the, that's the true. Higonokami, yeah, the, uh, that's factory. right. The knife factory yeah, was yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like the the 24 year old kid, uh, or I don't the know, or he's, yeah, he's yeah. a man, um, sitting. Uh, <laughs> he is a kid. He is, he is his father's kid. Yeah, Bezan yeah. and I are, are old now, but we're, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we can call a 24 year old yeah, a kid now. Yeah. Um, yeah, him just sitting on the floor or sitting like on a little cushion yeah. and hammering away yeah. and, and forging in the fire. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty cool to see, very, for very sure. Cool. Um, hello from New York City. Nice to see Brandon on the stream. The Brewers Brothers Right. Well, thank you, and uh, thanks for joining the chat. Um, okay, here's a good one. Uh, Richard the Great writes, Brandon, how do you feel about using bleach when you wash your denim? I mean, we don't usually recommend using bleach because, the, you know, these are dark indigo jeans and we like to keep them as dark as possible usually. And we like when they fade and have high contrast fade naturally. Also, when you use bleach, you have danger of making like bleach spots and stuff like that. So it's really not what we recommend. I mean, if you have maybe an all white jean, 
Um, or you want to be adventurous. Yeah, if you want to be adventurous, go ahead. But I'm not sure what the, what the uh, results are going to be. Oh, we I've, I've talked about the results. I've, I use yeah. it every now and then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to brighten up the yeah. touch. It's yeah. not uh, like... Especially too... don't overly bleach. Right, don't, right, right, yeah, right, yeah, unless you want to. Yeah, They're well, your that's, jeans. That's true, you too. You can do whatever you want. But yeah, a little bit of bleach is going to brighten up your fabric. Don't use a lot. If you're not sure about how much to use, use a little. And you see what that ha what it does. Doesn't do much. Use a little bit more next time you wash. And mm -hmm. find your balance from there. Uh, but yeah, definitely don't apply it directly on top of the yes. garment when you're when you're washing it. Usually there's a dispenser in your machine. Uh, yes, that's also different. Put that, so just, just follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, what else, Brendan? What else have we? Uh, what What else have you enjoyed while you're one you're thing here that in Japan? one thing that I really liked is Bay's Ad's reaction when leaving the uh, the weaving factory because, and also just the um, uh, visceral experience of the factory because the salvage denim is made on these old shuttle looms and they're they're vicious machines. They're loud and they shake. They make loom chatter. All this adds to the character. All this adds to the artisanal quality of making the denim. But it's loud as fuck. Like uh, we, when we left, Bayes, I was like, "Shit, my ears are ringing." Like mine were too, of course. And we actually, the last time that we came, we're like, "Oh, next time we should probably put earplugs." But uh, we have to like when we were this far away. I'm like, "Bayes, take a photo of that over there." <laughs> Sorry about it. Funny. So you know, this is a true story because earlier in the stream we talked about this exactly. And yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, it's very very fun to be in those rooms. And when you're watching all that denim being made, you're just mesmerized by all these machines in action. And you don't realize how painful it is until you really walk out of that room and you're like, oh, you're, that's, yeah. that was tough. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if you go to a newer mill that have um, like, like the, the modern, yeah, machines, modern yeah. machines, projectile loom machines, uh, you know, they're, they're much quieter. Yeah. But you, you see the difference. It's like one is like going to like a, like, like, like a hospital, which is like the white glossy walls and these like modern machines. Uh, and... But going to this factory that we just toured with, uh, um, you know, uh, shuttle looms, it's this, you can see that it's artisanal. The guy's running around making adjustments on the machine, changing the tension, uh, you know, with like indigo hands. And it's just so beautiful to see. It's, I love that we're supporting something that is artisanal and not just something that is the race to the bottom. Yeah. There's a, there's something about a hard day's work in the denim industry where your hands are blue. I mean, these, yeah. I mean, these guys have manly hands. Yeah. Did you see the guy's hands at the, at the knife factory? Like, this was yes. a manly Japanese man. Yeah. Yeah. Is, you know, he had big, uh, like, strong, yes. good, dirty, good hands. Yeah, no question about that. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Francisco, Michael, I love the enthusiasm. Is there a bigger denim nerd than Brandon? Awesome passion for his craft. I would agree. I would agree. Um, we, we only hire nerds. Yeah, yeah. All of our yeah. staff are <laughs> proudly yeah. Yeah. denim nerds. The, the Bruins brothers love my naked and famous... Uh, sorry, love my natural weft unbranded. Would love to see a natural weft elephant in the future. Hmm. All right. Yeah, totally. Okay. Could happen. Uh, we talked about uh, doing an all natural elephant at some point. Oh, yeah. And a crew wow. elephant. I love the yeah. idea of natural heavy. I mean, yeah. we have the, you know, the, the 16 ounce uh, yeah, exactly. uh, raw cotton slab. Not a lot of yeah. people do that. Yeah. Uh, okay, BD, people watching the end of the stream uh, replay, it feels like WWE Jim Ross would. Uh, <laughs> would have to say, oh my God, oh my God, Brandon is on his way to the ring. Yeah. I was so worried that you weren't going to make it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was like... I, got a, I got only a very slightly bit yeah. lost yeah. From, uh, from, from Tokyo yeah. to here. Yeah. It's okay. He made okay. it. And that's yeah. what is important. But you're yeah. you're talking up Bezad's Alley if you're talking about WWE yeah. and, mm -hmm. and announcers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they know. Oh, okay. They know. They know me well. Bezad knows how to cut yeah, a promo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bezad has a chair. Yeah, from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Uh, we're going to see if we missed any questions here. But, I, of course, if you guys have any questions for the big boss, Brandon Spark, here is the time to do it. He doesn't appear on these live streams very often, but what he does is always a special treat. Um, we do have. We probably should do an end-of-the-year recap at some point. We didn't do one last year. Oh, yes. Yeah. At some point, we should do it. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, by God, that's Brandon Sparks' music. He wasn't supposed to be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> supposed we? to be here today. Yeah. Uh, are there any plans for a gray denim jacket? Mm. Uh, plans? Okay. No plans. I don't think there's any plans in the works. I mean, I'm not opposed to a gray denim jacket. We, there are going to be a lot of denim jackets 
yeah, for the spring yeah. summer collection yeah. a lot black, um black ones that could be faded to gray yeah, yeah, we have true. this which is like charcoal yeah that's color. the, the, the um, it's black by white yeah. which makes a very dark gray result you're wearing a very interesting jean today brandon what are you wearing yeah i'm wearing yeah. The, i'm wearing the dusty rose and the pink silk uh, blend shirt yeah i'm a bit uh, all pinked out today yeah. Uh, I was going to wear my pink shoes, but they were uncomfortable, yeah. so I did not. Yeah. So this is a, a denim that we have coming out yeah. for spring, summer 23. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, a masculine pink. I really like it. It's not like a fuchsia or anything like that. No, that's it's a dusty it. yeah. pink. Yeah, yeah. it's a little dirty pink. You don't have so. to wear a pink shirt, too, yeah. if you, if you yeah. uh, black it all out yeah. or, on top, or wear yeah. white on top. Yeah. Hey, or or we, do all pink. Yeah, we have the denim jacket coming uh, in the spring as well. Um... Okay, Lee H writes, hey, uh, Brandon and Bayzette, are you guys doing a year, uh, uh, end of year rap no, video? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we should. We, we probably will. Um, okay, uh, Rin L writes, and I guess we could do this. We, we can answer now, but we can also answer this question in the recap. What's, your, what's each of your favorite releases from this year? Oh, yeah, shoot. That's a good. That's a good, hard <laughs> too, question. Us on there's, no, a it's too many. Of, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of them. Year. Like, uh, we can't even remember what it was yeah, list, this li year. List, list me all the... Yeah. Uh... I, I, I'm I going to go with two. I liked the raw cotton slub. Oh, yes. I liked the raw cotton slub, and I liked the Japan Heritage Kasuri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... I oh, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. The, the, raw that was the raw cotton slub for me, because, you know, I think this was the season that a crew denim really, like... Off. It really yeah. took off. Like we've we've had it for so long. We've always had it. It's always you know been there, and we sold they sold well. But this year, I think a lot of people really took to it. You know, they they said you know now for this summer, I'm gonna have a summer jean. I I'm wearing them in the fall. Yeah. You know, and they're starting to realize that you know your you, all of your denim outfits that you've been wearing with blue jeans work just as well with this color. Mm -hmm. So now you've expanded your wardrobe even further. So I was a really really big fan of that. And Japan Heritage Kasuri, because I think it's, it, don't I mean, I'm gonna say it, but you know it's like talking about children. But I think it's the most beautiful fabric uh -huh. of the year. You know the 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 amount of effort it takes to make the weft combined yeah. with the beautiful texture of the warp, mm -hmm. just such a beautiful artisanal fabric, and it's such a it's a fabric that really lights up a room. Yeah. You know when people see it, even if you don't know nothing about denim, you see that fabric, you're like. Something There's special something about special it. about yeah. that one. It's a, it's a great cuff flipper, and yeah. we'll, we'll do more in that vein where you have because we have always been doing great cuff flippers, but this is like a slubby cuff flipper. We don't we haven't really done that many of those mm -hmm. where it's not just special because the weft is special. It's special because the war, the warp and mm -hmm. the weft are yeah. super special. It's really two worlds colliding. colliding. That, that's why that one is so special. Yeah, I agree with the white denim too because I mean with the ecru denim the slub. Yeah, and I've been wearing so much. I've been obsessed with. Yeah, he's been wearing it. Monochromatic. A lot. I've yeah, been doing yeah. the all white everything yeah. a lot. Now I got the all pink everything. Yeah. Or I do all black everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. It, uh, what, do you, what do you think, Risa? What are, you, what are your choices? Oh, um, I liked the scratch and sniff oh, because yeah. it's been a long time since we did the scratch and sniff. But like to me, like scratch and sniff is like the, the most naked and famous, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. denim. Like that's, that defines us to a certain degree. And I, I, I think we like... I like the fact that we brought it back with the Hiba mm -hmm. scent because I love that scent and you don't know how many things yeah. that I have we of that. Own a lot of Hiba amazing. Scented things. But it's also like it kind of shows how we like grew up as a brand too. Like we all got older. And yes. we also like, you know, like we were doing fun things. We still do fun things. But I think we're growing like towards yeah. maturity. Yeah. And like yeah, absolutely. And adult uh, more subtle scents. Yeah. Uh yeah, great choice. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it it, it is the adult version of the yeah of, uh, like of the uh, raspberry yeah. was the first one. First one right? raspberry. Yeah. Yeah. We did mint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mint uh, was not so child, but uh, you know. Yeah. Uh okay. Uh Bruins Brothers writes: Will the true guy be a true straight from the knee? Sometimes straight jeans are still tapered. True straight, not a tapered straight. I don't know why people people do do that. They call their tapered. Jeans, straight legs, they're lying to you. <laughs> they're liars. That's f it's fake news. Straight as an arrow. Straight as true as straight can be. Yeah, that's right. That's it. Um, so, yeah, there you have it. Um, uh, Nicholas Viplu, it's not pink, it's salmon. 
Yeah, uh, we've actually, uh, we've, 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 this is more salmon. This is yeah, more salmon. Yeah, yeah, more yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they call it, we call it dusty yeah. rose. Yeah. So, I mean, whatever yeah. it is, it, I mean, uh, it's just, that's all semantics. It doesn't yeah. really matter what the name is. It's just what the, you yeah. know, if you like yeah. the color, you like the yeah. color. Francisco Michael writes, I got to say, my favorite is the raw linen. Yeah. Very, very good oh, choice. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm wearing here. Right I've, I've been wearing it a lot. You can nerd out and do the pants too, which I've done. And it was amazing in the spring, summer. But I find actually it does keep me warm too. Like now it's the fall and yeah. here... Like, what is it outside today? Like, five degrees or seven degrees Celsius here? Um, and, like, I was still, I mean, I was wearing a jacket over it, but um, it's keep, kept me pretty warm, too. Actually, yeah, I'm impressed with it. Right now. Right. Oh, nine degrees Celsius. Sh- Shane Delahunty, Brandon, what do you think is the best food in Montreal to enjoy? Everyone says poutine classically, but actually, I prefer the smoked meat. Uh, and, like, there's Schwartz's, but there's also lots of other places. We even have just like a chain called Dunn's, and I find that theirs is amazing mm-hmm. too. But you get a big old giant smoky sandwich like the size of your head, and just bite into that. It's just it's yeah. one of the greatest yeah. things. And you know the, the the pastrami that you see elsewhere, or like I've had you know smoked meat in Vancouver and other yeah. places, and like it does not compare. Um, no, no, no. We not went to same. remember they have a Schwartz's in Paris. We we, yes. we go to Paris for Men's Fashion Week, um, and uh, wasn't it Schwartz's? Or it didn't say Moishes, right? It was, I think they had a Schwartz's. I don't know if it was anyway, had affiliation. Yeah. And so we were like, oh, wow, we're like home away from home. We're like, let's order it. And it was just like dry yeah, not, not and the thin. And no, 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 no. It was, These guys are professionals. Yeah. Schwartz is, I mean, any smoked meat you have in Montreal is, is probably going to be good. Most of the time. Um, I mean, they have, it's just the bar is high. So you like, if you make a crappy one, it's just not going to survive. So uh, I, I think they do, they do good, uh, they do good uh, smoked meat sandwiches. <laughs> And they come. What's the difference between a smoked meat and a roast beef? Uh, I mean, I think I think the roast beef is not roasted. My brother has a has a whole uh-huh. diatribe about this. Okay. By the way, <laughs> the difference between pastrami, roast beef, yeah. uh, corned beef, smoked meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you know, know, like one is smoked, yeah. one is not. One has spices on it, one doesn't. Cured meats. They're all delicious. Mm. They're all delicious. Um, okay. Uh, I do like the I do love, I mean I, I would agree on both of those I do like the bagels of course I, this is all very stereotypical Montreal mm-hmm. but I have to say that they do all of those things very 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 well oh, uh, fresh bagel like yeah. the, the bagels Through, in, like right from the yeah, fire the, like they're oven yeah. made and yeah. if you go at the right time or uh, or you know when they they're just they're always them, making them you yeah. know and they're just like hot and like melty in yeah. your hands just like soft like that you don't even need butter on them you yeah. just you just eat them right like that and it just melts in your mouth it's crazy you get a paper bag of bagels yeah just walk around with paper of course that's just, that's just normal in Montreal too just walk around it's like being in France with a, with a baguette yeah. Here just, it's just a paper bag of bagels yeah. be on your way yeah it's really fun uh, if, you have, if you've never come to Montreal please please mm. do come and enjoy uh, it's a beautiful city come in February Weather's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Bring your Canada if, goose if you, if you like to ski or yeah. skate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. February mm, is the coldest it gets. Probably. Yeah. So. We, yeah. Can, we can get down to minus 40 with the wind. Yeah. It oh. gets... Uh, yeah. The, the, the positive temperatures will be like minus 20, minus 25. And like that's the day's high. It's just... It's <laughs> brutally cold. Uh, anyways, most people don't spend too much time outside. Uh you know. And by February, everybody's like so sick of winter too. Like yeah. December, everybody's kind of excited. Yeah. It's, you know. Christmas so skiing, comes. Christmas sledding. comes too early. <laughs> yeah. Christmas really needs to come in around February, yeah. where it's like, you know, you build you what well, you have a, a lot of the winter, and you have something to look forward to. As soon as Christmas is done for me, I'm like, I am done with winter. I don't need this <laughs> any. It was all aesthetic for me. I like the way it looks, <laughs> but if there's no uh, jingle bells and lights and stuff anymore, I'm wow. over it. You were I'm born in the wrong country. Yeah, born the- <laughs> uh, Lee H, are you guys gonna eat KFC during Japanese Christmas? Probably not. You know why? Two we reasons. We didn't book it. We didn't book it. <laughs> I, I don't it. really want it, but right. what do you mean you didn't book it? You have to book it. it really? Uh, yeah, yeah. We will show you a KFC on the way he, and when we go out. There will be a line there. Really? They're already they're already booked. The other night we were coming home. Line out out the door. And it was just for reservations for Christmas chicken. Really? Yeah. Wow. Japan is good at karaage, though. You don't have to just go to, to uh, yes, but KFC. Yeah, but like with special. the bone, the fried chicken, it's it's different. But yeah, KFC, um, I think quality has gone down. No. Or maybe my torrents for bad fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it's a little bit of both, probably. Yeah. But KFC owns the market on Christmas. Christmas. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it is a... It is a unusually cultural thing here that you eat fried chicken for Christmas. I guess because turkeys aren't really a thing here. Yeah. And KFC marketed the crap out of it. 
developed that long time image. ago too. Yeah. So it's like yeah. yeah. But like recently, I think kombinis have yeah. like more places that came offer with like it. A, you know, half yeah. the leg and yeah. stuff like that but, too. But yeah, you gotta if you called KFC on Christmas, if you walked into a KFC on December twenty fourth just because you wanted to eat lunch, you're not gonna get anything. There you're not will get there, those fried chicken. You, you might you're get, like, get some fries or something. <laughs> but there will be no chicken for you. And if you think like on on like those evenings, there will be lineups out the door around the block for people picking up their orders. It wow. is crazy. My yeah. my breakfast here is usually fried chicken. I go yeah. to, I go to the, con, the conbini, the convenience store. Yeah. And all yeah. the convenience stores here have amazing fried chicken. I mean, it's yeah. not the greatest in the world, but it's yeah. it's not like buying a hot dog at Seven Eleven uh, uh, in America. No, 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 not at all. Um. Okay. Uh, I saw a good question. Uh, okay. Uh, Uncanny Fox, any updates on the next Naked and Famous physical store? I mean, we want to open another store, but we have to do it carefully and not rush into things. So we're looking at different cities and considering all options. But, um, you know, we'll where, keep you posted. Where, where do you want it, Brandon? I mean, I think somewhere in California would be cool, like uh, Los Angeles or San Francisco could be amazing. It's mm-hmm. obviously a very big market. Um and there's cool stuff there. So that's one main idea that we're, that we're thinking. If it was, if we were to open up a store in LA, what part of LA would yeah, you yeah. recommend we go in? Yeah. There's like La Brea area. There's a hipster uh, Silver Lake town. There's uh, like um, uh, mass market Melrose. We've got, we got some answers. We've got Venomous Teddy saying Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Anonymous 24, Los Angeles. Richard, the great Texas. Mm. I'm a big, I, I'm, I keep telling Brandon, Texas. I think yeah. Texas is the place. I'm worried Texas yeah. is very hot. Texas is very hot. For, but they uh, for are a venom. Flagship. Like they're that's, venom it's people. A, yeah. 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 That's true. California like, is a little Like someone than. says Houston, Texas. What yeah. is the temperature in Texas to, uh, in Houston <laughs> today? Yeah. I have cousins who, in, who are, live in Houston, and they tell me, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a cool day today, a mere uh, 110. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a rush in Austin. Yeah, anyways, I, I, I like the idea of Texas. I just, because I think, when I think America, of course, Very, America's a big place, yeah. but um, Texas is uh, so American. Yeah. And Chicago I think is also Chicago, American too, yeah. Option. There's a lot of places. Eventually, yeah. everywhere will be like the Gap, <laughs> prob- and, uh, but, but better. Um, that is not the case. Huh? I don't think we plan to open two thousand stores. I want to open two thousand stores. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have one. We have one. We have two. We have we have, we have one naked and famous yeah, store yeah. and one Montreal yeah, we flagship. Are, store. We, we operate two stores. It but with every great company, they always started with one, and then then they then they got a lot of stores. So I agree. Um, We'll work on it. 78 degrees in Houston, Brandon. Oh, How do you feel beautiful. about that? That's amazing. That's so beautiful nice. temperature. Yeah, Jeans weather. Perfect. Somebody said. Yeah, that's perfect. Jeans weather. <laughs> Uh, Orange County may be better than LA or, uh, originally from the OC, Shane Dallin. Right. 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 So There's, that's another option. Yeah. So, uh, the only, uh, the only, they only wear, they only wear Wranglers in Texas. I don't know if the groovy guy will cut it. <laughs> uh, that's okay. They're for, they're for groovy people. But, uh, anyways, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, if, if necessary, we'll cater to the market. Uh, central UK, Birmingham. All right. I've been to yeah. Birmingham. In the UK, it was it was yeah, pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. people that I was with were fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Francisco Michael, I'll take my grandson to buy his first denim at the Naked Famous Chicago location in 2055. <laughs> <laughs> How old will we be in 2055? Too uh, old. Too old. We'll still be we'll still be making jeans. Don't worry, Brandon. We'll still be making jeans. Even if my head is in a jar, I'll still be making jeans. Um, uh, Futurama style. Uh, have you guys considered stocking non-Naked Famous denim brands in other stores? Kind of like how you. Have so many brands at Tate and Yoko. Um, yes, but the store is too small. Yeah. Mm. Also, I mean, here I'm gonna get into a little bit of rant mode. Mm-hmm. But you know, even at Tate and Yoko, like we carry other other brands. Oh wait, other brands at. Never think... mind. Okay, not uh, other. Uh, actually, I was gonna talk about something that you didn't ask. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, other brands at. Uh, I can see it happening. I mean, you know, even Naked and Famous in New York, it is a, it it. We only have a certain amount of space, so we can't have like you know we don't have a space to put you know uh, upstate stock yeah, hats or, or and things uh, like socks that. from yeah, or, uh, uh, anonymous. Yeah. At other stores, if we build it out properly and we have sections and room for all that stuff, I can certainly and see it, that yeah, happening. It depends on the space. Yeah. Not if we have a eight hundred square foot store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we need a certain size of the gap. Right. Right. Four thousand square feet. Four thousand square feet <laughs> in Texas. Yeah, it yeah. might be possible. Yeah, yeah. Ten thousand square feet. Ten thousand square feet. You guys heard it here first, Brandon's planning on opening up a 10,000 square foot location in Texas. Oh my God. Right. 
Um, okay. By 2055. By 2055. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. It's getting uh, juicy and political, guys. Uh, is it? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Um, uh, Texas versus California? I don't know. We're talking. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not involved in we that. Lo- we love all the states. Yeah, I, I, I love America. We love them all. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see how a cowboy cut. I'd love to see a cowboy cut from you guys. I think the true guy will satisfy uh, those mm. people because it's going to get over the boots, no problem. And we have no. the groovy guy, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the groovy guy's a little bit more groovy. Like yeah. 70s yeah, style. Yeah, 70s style. Mm-hmm. But the true guy will be a straight leg. It's going to fit over boots. So whether it's cowboy boots or work boots, I think you're going to, I think you will be, uh, You'll be happy with it. Uh, Richard the Great, Texas is king. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go with you there. Hey, I love Texas. Yeah, but we, we we've been there a few times. Yeah, I, I like it. I think it's a nice place. Um, uh, Francis, go, Michael. If you open in Texas, I'd love to see a collab with a cowboy boot maker. All right, Lone Star State denim. That would be, that would be it. Star exclusive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh man, I can already see the leather patch yeah. now. Oh, the, the girl with the cowboy hat on. <laughs> Waving the American flag, riding a horse, be amazing. The iconography in Texas is easy. It's gonna be so good. Uh, Stars and stripes, (laughs) silver (laughs) jacks. It would be great. Um, Okay, awesome. Uh, Cowboys have super awesome. Cowboys always have super high waist too. Yeah, the true guy won't be a low rise. Like it'll it'll be a Mm. it'll be a mature rise. Yeah, mid Um, mid to high. Yeah, this is all semantics though. You're gonna you'll try them on. You'll love them. Yeah. Richard's great. Lone Star State Denim. I love it. It's coming. We'll, we'll do it one day. By 2055. <laughs> I feel like those uh, those big corporations, we're going to be carbon neutral by uh, by uh, the year 3000. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I know you are. Because <laughs> none of you, <laughs> at least I hope, you know, uh, hopefully I'm alive in 2055 and you can call me out on it. But sometimes I see these corporate things where it's like, by the year 25, uh, by the year 2150, we're going to be blah, blah, blah. I'm like, None of you who are alive right now making these claims will have to, you know, speak yeah, up to. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, hopefully they have yeah. children. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll call them to blame. Okay, guys, we're gonna get into movie time. We're gonna do a quick little movie review. I don't have snack review for you guys oh, today. Oh, should have brought. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna do one uh, little movie recommendation for the weekend because it is December. We're getting to the Christmas mood. Mm-hmm. We gotta get to the Christmas mood with everyone's favorite Christmas movie, <laughs> Elf. Will Ferrell, he is uh, incredible, and if I mean, uh, I would ama- I hope that all of Everybody you have seen this. Seen if you, this. Yeah. if not, you 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 can stop watching yeah, this yeah. video now. And go, Just go, go watch find it. it definitely on streaming somewhere. If you like those old, um, I I don't even know what when they're from the fifties and sixties, like little the, cartoon yeah. uh, Christmas specials, very very much uh, based on those like uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and uh, Frosty the Snowman, that kind of stuff. Those little stop motion animations. So uh, you can see a lot of the connections uh, that were made from those films to this. Uh, watch it. You you will see the world's greatest coffee uh, featured in this <laughs> film as well. Santa, uh, <laughs> I know him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so that's it. Uh, everybody, go watch Elf this weekend. Get into the Christmas spirit. Get into the Christmas mm-hmm. mood. Uh, it's only a couple more sleeps away until Santa comes. So uh, everybody, get excited. All right. Be um, good boys and girls. Yeah, be, be good boys and girls. There's still time. If you've been bad, you still have time to be good. So be good to one another. Uh, tell your mother you love her. Uh, do something nice for somebody. We're going to see you guys next week. Same bat time. Same bat channel right here on YouTube. 7 p.m. Eastern, Friday mm-hmm. evenings. And uh, have a great right. weekend, everybody. Say bye to Brandon. Brandon, bye bye. thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. And, uh, and we'll see you guys soon. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys.